Australian politician Barnaby Joyce has caused some uproar after being filmed drunkenly rolling around on the ground in what some are calling a legendary f***ing move. Although Joyce has said it is because he mixed alcohol and medication, his boys from college have urged everyone not to let him downplay how much of a legend he is. With his college roommate Jack Spears stating, The man used to down a full bottle of Jack, take a shit on the road, and then tag the fattest broad at the party before yelling his famous line, If you can walk in a straight line, you're no friend of mine. Classic Barnaby Bender. According to an old co-worker from his nightclub days, the only medication that man takes are gas station boner pills washed down by Jack Daniels. And says Barnaby was even on one of his classic benders when he opposed a free vaccine for HPV and allegedly annihilated 18 shots before screaming, they ain't bumps if we all got him, before humping the air and passing out. Happy to see him still getting at it at 56. Publicly, Barnaby has stated that it was a big mistake, but was later spotted at the pub defending his honor by standing on the counter of the bar offering to personally suck the d of any man who could outdrink him. As promised for all you Aussies and New Zealanders, the tickets for my tour have gone on sale. Auckland, July 24th. Then we got Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth. This weekend I'll be in Pittsburgh. Then we got Dallas, Calgary, Baltimore, Washington, Boston, Winnipeg, Atlanta, San Diego, Houston, and Austin. Yes, and I will be in Scottsdale, February 29th, Saratoga Springs, Dallas, Minneapolis, Edmonton, Vancouver, uh, you can go to dannycomedy.com. RyanLongComedy.com. The boys. The boys cast. The lads. The boys cast. The dudes. Prepare yourself for boys cast. The bros. The boys cast. The homies. The boys cast. The dudes. The Boys Cast is back in business. Let's go. You already know what it is. Danny has informed me that it is Ash Wednesday. Yes, it's Ash Wednesday today. I was took the train over here, and then I saw some some lady with a little schmutz on her head. Interesting. I go, hey, lady, lady, you got some some schmutz on your head. And what did she say back to you? And then she goes, it's 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 Lent starting. Listen up, Jew boy. Listen up, Jew boy. <laughs> We've had enough of your. Tunnels. This is a Catholic nation. Get back to your yeah, tunnels, yeah, yeah. Jew boy. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, you're not celebrating. Do you think there'll be people celebrating Valentine's Day that both have the fucking stuff on their forehead? <laughs> Yes, people are out at like a fancy dinner tonight, <laughs> just fucking eating spaghetti with just ash. Ash Wednesdays is the funniest shit, dude. <laughs> but I was talking to Lou Spears because I just wanted to play one bit of a clip before we get into it about More that Barnaby guy. Because it's honestly, he's got the most uh, Rob Ford vibe I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, he's just like kind of doesn't give a shit. He's very unbothered by the whole thing. Well, he's just sort of, yeah, he's sort of like, yes, I, have, I hate that I have to go through this. And they ask him questions. They're like, uh... Uh, should you be reprimanded? How do, the, how do Australian people take? They go, should you be reprimanded? Yeah, that's pretty good. And then he goes, he goes, I don't, you know, I, I don't know. I guess ask the people in charge of reprimanding me. You know what this reminded <laughs> me of? He reminded me of if you've ever been in a relationship where you've like mentally checked out and the girl's like, 100%. she's like, you want to break? So what? You want to break up? You go, Pfft. yes, I don't, then break up. Sure, if that's know. what yeah. happens, it's if fine. The, yeah. <laughs> I'm done here. I'm mentally over this. I guess we'll just break up. Yeah, I don't. Okay. Sure, <laughs> if that's what happens. This is the, and he has to do all these interviews sort of accounting <laughs> for it. But this one, I just, I don't know. I really liked it. Hold on. People may want to do. Um, are they circling while you were down, do you think? Uh, I don't. I don't. Nat, how would I know? I'm here. Oh. Are, you are, are the uh, were there people circling around you while you were drunk, lying on the floor, uh, drunk out of your mind? Also, I don't think I've ever taken any medication that does that. It's like yes, if you take medication and then fucking also get, I think I'd say the medication for me generally because I've done it. They always it's tell the you don't drink on alcohol. Ambi yeah. Well, it's, they always tell me on antibiotics you're not supposed to drink, and it's like, well, yeah, it makes you a couple beers drunker, but it never really does me right in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like the the Roseanne defense. Well, Ambien, I feel like, sure, but you only take that at, like when you're sleeping. You're not taking Ambien during the day. I guess what happens is sometimes people take it for like a nap. Uh, there was, I can't remember, what? some podcast, some hockey podcast I was listening to, and some guy was like, he took it to try and nap. That's and nice. he's like, literally, he's like, I was playing in a game in the NHL. He's like, I didn't know where I was. Like, people were like having to help me like with shift changes. Like, I was so fucked up. But like, you don't want to tell the coach that I'm like, hey, I'm so fucked up. I can't play because it's like you could get, you know, cut and like literally your career's over. That's uh, crazy. So he's like a couple players knew about it, and that was it. Angry that um, you will. That's a bit just to this guy, but <laughs> just I just like they keep asking him questions. He just keeps going. 
I, you know, yes. If you want to fire me, fire me. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you know, I, I still got my pension. He probably knows he's got his pension. He goes, <laughs> you know, he goes, I've been doing this a while. I got the pension. Well, you know what the problem is when you, okay, if you're a politician that fucking passes out on the floor drunk and all that sort of shit, part of it is like, you're like, okay, I'm going to have to get it from, I'm going to get it from the news. I'm going to get my party. It's like, whatever you guys are yelling at me, I promise you the missus had home last oh, night was oh, worse. Oh, yeah, yeah. He goes, this is just for me to get out of the house. <laughs> Buddy, you're, you, whatever you're throwing at me right now, <laughs> I told her that I was going to the gym. So just to give you, just to give you a little bit of a, <laughs> it kind of looked like I was trying to do some sit-ups. You see the, the video? I am trying to do some sit-ups there. I so. told the wife I was at the gym, so I'll tell you that much. Like you, whatever you think that I'm dealing with right now, I promise you, it's a fraction of what I'm dealing with at home. Yeah, the, that is a defeat. Says the man. Indian cab driver was the hero of the story because Indian cab driver came and uh, uh, scooped him up. Scooped him up. Well, that's but the problem is, I'm telling you, these cab drivers are out of control because they're they probably saw. Him, they're like, I can fucking rinse this guy for whatever he's worth, man. I'll bring him home, pop 200 bucks on there yeah. for all I care. Oh, yeah. Who's he going to tell? But I got, I was at the cellar. I'm coming home, and you know how you get the cabs, but the scum, airport too, all the Uber drivers just uh, stand there and try to, they go, taxi, taxi. And yeah, they go, they're like, the illegal, like uninsured taxis. And they scam you, right? Because you, yeah. go, you go, what does the taxi cost? It's 80 bucks, and they're like, uh, they, they bill you 120, right? Mm. So this guy in the cellar, he, I, I've taken the, you know, I take an Uber home from there all the time. It's 18, you know, 17, 18. This guy goes, Uber, I go, yeah, if you want to do it for the same price. He goes, yeah, yeah, yeah no problem, no problem, no problem. And then he goes, he starts the car, and he starts driving, and he goes, yeah, so we got, and he shows me the price, 38. I go, okay, but it was not 38. And he goes, oh, it's the luxury car. No problem, no problem, no problem. I go, okay, and he's still driving this time. I go, okay, but then let me out. I don't know. I don't want to take, I'm not that's, taking double the price. That's and he goes, the thing. Yeah, he's kept saying no problem. I go, okay, it's double the price. I don't want to go. And he goes, no problem, no problem, 35, no problem, no problem. I'm like, oh. What well, is a problem? Yeah. I'm not paying double. I mean, also, you could just get to the thing and be like, bye. I don't know. You have zero recourse. We didn't enter into any sort of agreement. I there. don't want to be jumping and running and fucking. No, you're not. You're not <laughs> jumping and running. You're like, hey, here's $18. Here's a 20. And you go, I don't know. If you yeah, don't, no problem. Don't want to call no, the cops. No problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be like, yo, call the cops. Let's call the cops. I said, let's, you know what? Let's call the cops and ICE. Let's just get everyone involved. Let's, you know, let's, let's get this leave, interaction let's on the books. Let's leave no stone unturned here because we want everyone to leave this uh, transaction feeling good about it. You know, so. yeah, yeah. Well, let's get the proper authorities out of here mediating. <laughs> insurance adjusters. Let's get everybody. Let's, I'm sure the insurance company knows that you're running an illegal Uber. So, from your personal car. So, let's get them involved. And, you know, <laughs> that's actually good. Yeah. yeah. That's, hey, I'm actually an insurance adjuster myself. So, uh, <laughs> speaking of which, yeah. No problem. No problem. No problem. You said no problem. Remember that was in, times. I can't remember where in Europe where we, we needed, it was Amsterdam. Remember, we need to go like, 10 minutes like I was like 50 euros but it was at the train station so they're they're not policed at the train station uh -huh. or whatever so they're like we're like what 50 euros um, for a 10 minute drive and they're like yeah they're like we rather just take one fifth the amount of trips and charge five times the amount of money but also scam people it's there, but it's a huge scam and a half probably yeah. it washes out to the same they just work way less I guess yeah well I wasn't liking it no one I was also thinking on the topic of Ubers I went to a Super Bowl party that was pretty fun but there's some high rollers there Ooh. and one thing I was sort of thinking when I was in the Uber and it was like I'm surprised that uh, no Uber driver is just like a recorded a conversation with like a famous person and then just like released it for tons of money you know what I mean like and then I looked at it and they go well Uber the app is like recording all your conversations and all the Uber drivers record the conversations so they and they're saying it's for safety right what do you mean recording the conversations audio yes so when you get in an Uber, your phone is your own personal phone's recording. No, I think as well? it's his end, probably. Oh, okay. But my point is, uh, and then they have the uh, some of them have the actual recording thing on there. But I didn't think it was audio, and then you're just like, I was always kind of thinking that sometimes because you, sometimes you're in the conversation, and people are like, you know, talking about some pretty personal stuff, right? And I'm always, I don't love it because I'm always looking at this guy, being like, what is this guy up to? Sure. And then they're recording all the conversations, but like, how many? I guess it's, I looked it up and I haven't seen anywhere that happens. Maybe someone could find one, but it's like, dude, if you take a Uber and you got like, I mean, we have you know some pretty big people that just t take cabs drunkenly all the time, do yeah. a half hour of just like talking shit. Some guy <laughs> in a cab with the, you know, not his wife. You know what I mean? Sounds like a podcast idea. <laughs> Well, I guess there's sort of like an implicit NDA, and Uber would probably get sued by a bunch of well, that person. Would, your life, well, that person would never be able to drive Uber again. But obviously, they might make that. So what? How many actors in New York, in like Los Angeles, are also Politicians? driving Uber? 
that's what I'm saying. Politicians should know better, but I bet you they don't. I bet you so many politicians just like, or, you know, CEOs just like get drunk, get in an Uber and then fucking yap, 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 yap. I'm sure all it takes is for this guy to boop, boop, boop. And then all of a sudden he sells that to TMZ for a million bucks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's very possible. I'm sure Lindsey Graham's left some crazy swinger sex club (laughs) poppered out and stuff. And that's the craziest one to me that people always say that Hollywood has the sex parties. And I'm like, I hope, or no, sorry that they also say, they say DC has these crazy sex parties yeah, yeah. and you're like i hope fucking not <laughs> dude if i go to hall if you go to dc and it's your and you you know work way up the chain and you're like now we're gonna show you the real dc and then you get there it's fucking ted cruz railing nancy <laughs> pelosi you're like what the fuck and you're yeah. just like you I finally think made it i think they had different sex parties <laughs> the pelosi oh uh, sure but it's ted like cruz. who who in d you know they call it ugly hollywood who in dc I'm do you want to watch at a sex party never heard that. <laughs> really no that's funny <laughs> hollywood for the fucking uggos the problem is is if you're a politician too you know about uh, all the honey pots and stuff. So Cause you can't trust. Them. Like if you're like yeah, if some just you know Ted Cruz and some just rocket walks up to you at like a hotel <laughs> bar. Yeah, nice surely chat. you're not like the cruise master still got it. Yeah, <laughs> I think, yeah, I do. And you're like, no, it's a Russian spy, you dummy. I think they do though. There was they a couple have, of them that got got got. Well, got. Swalwell got the chick, the Chinese, the chick. Chinese spy. And you're like, yo, these chicks. Are, I mean, I guess to a degree, the chicks are into these like powerful people, but you have to be extra on the lookout buddy i don't think you could pay me enough to go to a, a fucking dc sex party <laughs> you get <laughs> like who, who's the best case scenario is just like you know rachel feinstein's corpse just fucking getting tuned up by <laughs> i think that's the comic comedian no what's not rachel feinstein obviously. diane feinstein diane but uh, diane yeah, feinstein. Her, everybody taking her for a spin <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, if you're like, the truth is, she's actually not dead. She's barely living, and that's how we <laughs> like him in D.C. You go, what the fuck? You're like, welcome to D.C., brother, and you go, ugh. Yeah. That's the thing, though. There's nothing appealing about any of these D.C.'s no. grossies. No. Unless there's people who actually work in it, they go, oh, you fool. It's like, it's a bunch of the boys, and then we get a bunch of container escorts. And- <laughs> you fool! <laughs> They're all shipping container escorts. We have all their passports. <laughs> And let you, me tell you, they're not getting them back. You fool! First you we have fool. to first we have to run through uh, Elizabeth Warren, and then that's how it unlocks the real shit. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren's yeah. just getting fucking tuned up from either end when by Rand her, Paul. When you, it ends the moment you fuck her so good, she goes hi 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 hi, and you go, we got her, and they come down from the sea, they drop them down from the ceilings. <laughs> Everybody's watching, like, just circled around Elizabeth Warren and fucking, oh, <laughs> definitely on. <laughs> Elizabeth Warren probably gets fucked. I guess she goes, yes, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, 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 harder. Nah, you call that hard? Nah. <laughs> Socialized pussy, everyone gets a turn. <laughs> I'm telling you, you brought me one of those DC sex parties. You'd be, you, you'd be, I'd be hanging out by the water cooler. I'll tell you that, my friend. <laughs> so the party was good, though. It was a good game. Yeah, it was super fun. Yeah, nice. Um, there's not much more to say about the Super Bowl. And it's been talked about. Moving on. Yeah, rigged. So, <laughs> yeah, did you think it was rigged? No. The um, so. I guess the only thing was Kanye West says that he got kicked out. Uh, he says that he went to the Super Bowl, and then apparently this is uh, kind of one of his sca- his schemes. Uh-huh. Is um, th- he he knew that they weren't going to show him because of uh, he's sort of dark matter right now. Yeah, and he, what he did allegedly was he got. Uh, tickets right under uh, Taylor Swift booth because he knew that every time they were going to cut to her, he'd be in the shot. Oh, he thought that it and he bought a Super okay Bowl. Play. He bought it. I didn't see it, but I saw it after the fact that he bought a Super Bowl ad and literally just recorded it from his iPhone in a cab. I mean, that's a crazy, crazy move. move. Yeah, Seven respect. Mil. Uh, it's Seven fucking nuts. For that. Allegedly, he also said that he because he's selling everything for twenty bucks, and he said it actually did okay for him. But he I mean, would, it's been okay. I remember looking. I actually looked at because really selling it. Because I remember when those shoes, those dumbass sock shoes came out. They were like two hundred something, and I guess lots of people bought them. But then he's even on top of that issuing refunds for the difference anybody who bought them. And then, but I'm like the twenty dollars. You can't like yeah, you sold a lot. Are you making any money off of this? Well, the sock shoes is just a fucking leotard from Made in China. Probably. That's what I'm saying. But you're like even the shirts. You go like, dude, that's how much a shirt at, at fucking Uniqlo. Have costs. you ever met anyone who wears the sock shoes? Like, who is wearing these sock shoes? Well, that's the whole thing with Kanye. He goes, yeah, not yet. And then I'm going to make <laughs> them wear these dumbass sock shoes. Ryan's Ryan's saying this like he's not going to be wearing fuck. We're all going to be wearing sock shoes. <laughs> 
He's saying sock shoes are going to be as common as Vans. Yeah, he goes, yeah, they're not common yet. But my whole thing is, you go, that's awesome that he made them twenty dollars. Like anybody can afford them. It's it's essentially you know Stefan Marbury when he made his shoes like twenty dollars. Yeah, but too, it sort but. of takes away the allure because the whole thing was you're like sock shoes and people are like, what are you wearing fucking sock shoes for? You're like, buddy, you know how much these cost? <laughs> this is an eight hundred dollars shoe. And they're impossible to get. Yeah, so you sort of have like some sort of culpable di- deniability when you show up with this dumbass outfit and people are like, what the fuck's that? You're like. What the fuck is this? You simpleton. This is yeah. three grand. So- sock shoes. These sock shoes are three grand. Three but, but not only are you wearing sock shoes, you're wearing $20 fucking shoes. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like not even a high fashion thing anymore. Only because, he, but it is, I guess, because he's bummed. You're wearing the Timex of fucking sock shoes. Yeah. And the shirts are all, the, <laughs> the sizes were all weird because there were pants. I go, yeah, maybe I'll get a $20 pair of pants. <laughs> And then <laughs> that's, 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 that's how he's getting the Jews back on. Now. That's how he's getting the Jews back on board. By the way, <laughs> all the Jews love Kanye now. Go twenty dollar pants. <laughs> we, we had this guy all wrong, Herschel. There's like guys literally in the garment district being like, we can't possibly make pants for twenty dollars. That's a good <laughs> deal. Do you see that uh, the pa- pro Palestine guy went and shot up Joel Osteen's church? Oh, clever that, or not clever, but rich that you call it a guy. It was a lady. A lady, yeah. yeah, yeah. Ryan, why are you erasing ladies <laughs> and their achievements? <laughs> that was a woman. That does seem like that a was woman. A biological thing to do. woman went had zero kills. Yeah. <laughs> 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 just literally that was, might have been the most unsuccessful mass shooting in history <laughs> I, I don't even know if she got a shot off but it's it's kind of sad because she brought her do you kid. think she couldn't hold the gun and she was sort of fiddling yeah, around like, with it <laughs> <laughs> just fucking blew up the roof <laughs> didn't know about the recoil she also she, didn't realize that joel oystein was just like she shot joel oystein 15 times she's like it didn't even make a dent because he's just like lined in money yeah. at all times <laughs> Like Joel Osteen is just duct tape, like fucking huge pads of bills at him um, at all times. Joel Osteen's probably like this: is you can't buy this kind of publicity. <laughs> For sure, he is crazy huckster. He's so happy that he gets to go out there and be like, "What a terrible thing happened!" Oh all my like, god, oh, this is fake crying. But no, but it's sad because she uh, she brought her son, and her son got shot in the head. Yeah, and that's as, as, but she got killed. The police dispatched of her immediately. Yeah, and they're sort of. Say, I saw that people were saying that happened, and everyone's kind of like, "Well, yeah, it was her fault, obviously." Yeah, yeah I mean, she walked into a church with a AR-15. Taking your kid to come watch mom do that is fucking next level. <laughs> that's t- one day that take a kid to work. Do you think it just was take a kid to work day? Yeah, they had no was, choice. Uh, yeah, sorry. She couldn't just leave him somewhere. That's crazy. That is pretty mental. Yeah, that's... Uh, but yeah, she didn't kill anybody. She had a pro-Palestine and kind of not a big news story for some reason. That was a pretty big news story, no? Well, I thought it would be bigger. Oh, Danny playing the victim here. Oh, <laughs> I'm victim? I'm not <laughs> a fucking church guard. As far as I'm concerned, it should be on the cover of every fucking well, magazine in the history of town. I, 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 trust me, this is for the church. I'm standing up for the white churchgoers. Oh, it doesn't sound this. like it. <laughs> oh, you're saying you think it'd be a bigger story because it's Christian? Yeah, I they just I think it's yeah it's I not a big story because it was a church. No. Oh, you're church. saying that uh, it would be a, a bigger woman went story. And shot a, went to go shoot up a church, and they're just like, yeah, it was a blip. You're saying if it was a mosque, we'd be hearing about it. Uh, yeah. Well, that I agree with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'd be here, or at synagogue, we'd be hearing about it. There's nothing about this that fits the narrative. That's for no, sure. A woman shooting up a church. I did hear about it though. I know I heard about it. it wasn't well, really. I don't know. Buried that it, buried. It was uh, Super Bowl Sunday. That's the weekend, so it gets pretty much anything. It's a bad day to do your shooting if yeah. you're trying to get public. I mean, literally, like in Israel, they're like they bombed like Rafa or something, and all these people are like, "There, you're watching the Super Bowl, and they're bombing Rafa," and everybody's like. Just tell us on Monday. Okay? Yeah, <laughs> you got. <laughs> it's a big game, all right. Just tell us on Monday. That's a, that that look tomorrow. Tomorrow, Rafa still be bombed. Okay, <laughs> those people will still be dead on Monday. Just let us know that. I agree. That's insane. If you think you're going to try to get publicity for your thing, <laughs> that that is a good day for bombing people. If you're not, if you're trying to go under that the is radar. a woman thing to do too, because she goes like, ah, fuck game, stupid sports ball, hate that shit. Yeah, and then probably there's <laughs> someone telling them it's like, I don't know if that's the best day. It's like you know, sports ball happening. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. Is sports ball happening? Yeah, I'm going to go shoot up the church. Thanks very much. <laughs> Have fun with your sports ball. <laughs> she walked in there like MacGruber first time using the gun. <laughs> the, the, the torque is just too much for her. Yeah, She's yeah. going all over the place. <laughs> that, was... that is super funny to think that the woman shooter bought it. <laughs> yeah. There was a couple yeah, of They're only protesters. effective once they actually convert to man, and then they, they're able to do it. But <laughs> That's what I've been saying, man. To man. Well, I've been doing a joke about this, but yeah. it's like the only school shooter is a man because 20, 25 years living as a woman, no problem, one year paying for her own drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yep. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know what? I was going to talk about more of the little protester thing, but I'll say in a second because I. So John Stewart came back, and we talked about this. I think most John on the Patreon last time. Leibovitz. <laughs> Ryan. Looks pretty good for sixty, by the way. Looks or great. He is. Looks great. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever he's doing, I got to do that. Blood libels. I know. That's what I'm thinking. There might be. <laughs> I'm just. I'm just saying what everybody watching right now is thinking. He's doing blood libels. Yeah, he's got to be doing something, man. He's yeah. looking okay. He's looking good. Um, because you know what? It, it, it's like well, that's how you want to look when you get sixty. Is you want to look like good, but just sixty. You don't want to like the other way to go is they try to get like over the top jacked. Yeah. Like RFK looks like jacked uh-huh. but your skin's you, your skin can't hold all the fucking muscle when you get that old so it looks kind of weird you just want to be like in shape you want you want the swimmer's body you yeah know what i mean, I, mean I think the- quality of life you still do want to be strong though i think your overall like maybe looks might suffer a bit but you will probably be i think you have to juice so much though they all get red skin so now you're like yeah. 60 it's like yeah you're 60 but you look like earthworm jim you know yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the whole, like, old lady thing, too. Like, you go to Miami Beach. There's a whole thing in, in Florida and stuff, Miami, where it's a lot of Quebec, Quebecois, who come down for the, like, s- snowbirds Aww. or whatever. And they just fucking nuke themselves. Like, they're, like, you know, they'll be, like, 70 or 80, and yeah. their skin is so dark, like, this table almost. Like, it's so dark brown, but they're just regular white people. They all look like tan moms. They look like hot dog. Yeah, tan moms. They're all, like, hot dog tan moms. Yeah, the tan mom look isn't the move, man, but you have to almost do but the it does t- look better from a distance. Distance, it's when you get up close <laughs> like from a distance you go yeah that might that woman might be 40 mm. and you get up close and you're like no that's a hundred year old i agree so i think that yeah that's the best look is you just want to be s- slightly tanned um you don't want to be too jacked because once you get too jacked your skin starts doing all sorts of weird things yeah i wonder if that was a consideration for trump he goes if i keep this tan situation going because he obviously at some point made a decision. He goes, I'm going to spray tanning. I know. Yeah. Right? Like he goes, uh, probably like it's not like I'm on camera all the time, and probably like I'm going to look like shit. What well, does age you like crazy? It ages you, but so he kind of. I mean, the, the tan, the spray tan, can't be great for you either. But it's probably better in terms of you know not destroying your skin. Yeah, so that's then, true. So he's probably like, but then you get bad spray tans is the problem. Sometimes like they're just not done that evenly. Spray tans all look fucking ridiculous, yeah. man. I've dated a bunch <laughs> of girls that fucking were into that shit, and they just like their hands are always just like yeah, yeah. fucking all spotty because it starts rubbing off in different places. Mm-hmm. It's just a weird ass fucking look, man. Yep. Yep. Um, but so he did the thing, uh, and he did the first monologue, and it was interesting to me the extent to which like left wing press is like giving it to him. And, and it is really, I don't know if, if uh, I probably do a little more of, of like just searching through all the actual like news aggregation sites and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, you kind of realize the extent to which they all write the same story. And it's a weird, it's a, like, kind of a weird thing. They all write the same story. They all write the same angle. And I'm not just saying the ones where they all, uh, you actually have the same story, like the news where yeah, it's they like, just have the same where opinions. it's syndicated. They're, they're, uh, yeah, but it's always like a random opinion that they all just like randomly. Oh, so out of nowhere, you all just like decided this. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. It's like we all just decided that uh, you know John Stewart's out. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. They didn't. Well, I, you know what? I wonder how much there's a degree to someone does it, and then you know there's some chatter, and then they all coalesce around a single idea on like maybe Twitter when people first are because that's the probably the initial. Site. That's a good point. And then uh, like because all the you know left wing journalists probably all follow each other and they go yeah that's the kind of narrative yeah that's what's going viral we, right now yeah that's what's going viral that seems to be the best take about it is he's not you know he's doing too much what about ism and you know saying they're both bad yeah, and it'll that's be, what they don't like you're right because it'll even be like a real estate thing where it'll be like is the bubble like over and it'll be just like they all decided that at the same time yeah, you know yeah yeah um, until, until next week until next week yeah but so they wrote th- this it's interesting what they wrote because they go this is a slate article and they they're sort of more in depth but they go the world watched john stewart outgrow the daily show has the world outgrown john stewart and they were all some version of this right being like is he the man we need right now and i'll read the first part the daily show is famous for taking aim at hypocrisy using rapid fire montages that catch politicians and pundits but it turned out that no amount of daft editing and artfully crafted zingers could make public figures grow a sense of shame as stewart admitted in his final Final episodes. Many of the people on the show, um, 
that he had destroyed and ended up entirely unscathed. That is an interesting thing where you This go, was their big thing. Yeah, they go, hey, like, and I don't know what you want to have happen to them. They're what elected officials. The, this is what they're sort of saying, hey, we're at war, yeah. and this guy's out here kind of making jokes that don't actually make a difference. The purpose of a comedian <laughs> is to be a fucking about clown that goes to work, yeah. and at the end of your at the end of your set, seven people should be fired. I mean, is Stephen Colbert not enough? Like, you have Stephen Colbert and every late night. Well, even he's not doing much. damage, man. They want people to be they want people to be fired. Sure. They want people to be, you know, they're saying that like Com- like a uh, late night talk show is the fifth branch of government. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the way that they see it. Is the media is that the media is the fourth estate? Right. And then and then comedy and late night talk shows is the fifth estate mm-hmm. that is here to have people you know lose their jobs and sort of and just kind of keep keep everyone in check. In their mind, it's to be held accountable. And they want them to be you know uh, uh, destroyed. Mm-hmm. You know, not just verbally. Well, they want them to be destroyed financially, everything. You know, politically and career wise. Right. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But the reason why, obviously the. I agree that is what they think, and I sort of agree that is what's happening. It's like, yeah, that all the other people that you guys support uh, in entertainment, it was like, yeah, they're, they're very, like, it is more politics than entertainment, right? Yeah. And obviously it's a political show, but the reason why it was, uh, f- like, funny to me, because in their mind they're like, hey, we're on the streets in a fucking war. Yeah. Like, this guy just got his neck slashed, and then we got Jon Stewart being like, fucking look at the haircut on that guy, and you're like, <laughs> how? That yeah. is a... And they're all getting fired, too. They're like, we don't know when the <laughs> boogeyman's coming to fire half of our, like, newsroom. Oh, definitely the, uh, you, you ever see in movies where the people get shot, and you know, people always like to talk about how that's not actually how they get shot, because they go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, not just not what happens when you when you get shot. I mean, I can confirm that based off right of my now. Twitter for you feed. <laughs> that is not how people get shot. But you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what's even another point, though? Like, these journalists, if you look at journalism and you go, all the blogs are going under. Every other day, they're writing an article being like, our viewership's down, no one listens to us, and that's because of racism or sexism or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because of all the bad things, that's why we're losing our profession. Can you believe he's not doing that too? Yeah, but also you're like, hey guys, the whole thing is the Daily Show is not supposed to be journalism. It somehow becomes it, and it 100%. did for a while. And he was like, you know, they were saying he was the most trusted newsman in America, but it was because you guys were doing such a bad job. Exactly. That he stepped in and filled this void that you left like wide open, or just slowly like ceded this territory to him. But for them to be like, oh, he's not doing journalism. You're like, that's not his job. He's that's a comedy show. It's on Comedy Central. Yeah, and it did become that exactly. And it became it, and now you're mad that he's maybe not as effective but you but know, this is the reason though changed. and the reason why the times have changed and this is kind of like the thesis of you know i have a few things to we're gonna go through here but it's like there is still like what he's doing there is still like crazy stuff on the right wing to talk about and there's funny stuff but there's no like the point is they they need him to also say the really crazy stuff on the left wing which is pretty arguably much crazier at this point yep they need to argue that that's normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, sure. That's the problem. Or it's not as bad. Yeah, he goes, like, hey, like, we don't like this 50-50 they stuff. They didn't like when he... So he basically said Joe Biden was old, and they were like, what are you fucking doing, pal? Well, because <laughs> they are... The, they just... In their mind, they go, the stakes are so high. They're doing the same thing again as 2015. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because right? yeah, yeah. the stakes are, are so high, it's not... And this is exactly what essentially ruined their whole business, was they go, look... What's going on is so important that we us have to lie. lying is like the ends justify the means here, right? Yes. Like we can lie. The populace is just we a have bunch, to lie. Just a bunch of idiots. They'll believe whatever slop we give them. They're they're currently they're gonna ask for seconds. Yeah, they're going to ask for seconds, but they're currently buying into this Trump narrative, which will destroy the country and maybe the world. So it's this we're more this is more this is bigger than us. Exactly. And it wasn't. And now they're doing this again. Yeah, and. Yeah, and he still even did. He was like, um, you know, Biden, like, really old. And he was like, but you know who has a really bad memory? Trump. And then he showed clips of Trump having a bad memory. He's like, you want to talk bad memory? But it was like, okay, but sure. But it doesn't change the fact the president's, like, sure. really yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah, they're both. I mean, look. <laughs> They're both old, but you're like, you're not. And maybe, he, I guess he's saying, hey, can we get new candidates? You go, yeah, Deep State's not doing new candidates this year, John. 
I don't know if you've been watching anything, John Leibovitz. <laughs> But the deep state's not giving us new candidates. The <laughs> deep state's made their decision. The deep state has made their decision. We're getting two old guys again. So just do the that. Fucking adrenochrome taps are flowing. Yeah, the best thing you can get is you go look. I, I mean, I guess there's a possibility. I don't know what RFK's polling is like. I keep seeing a lot of people being like, you know, I would vote for RFK if it wasn't a waste of a vote. And you're like, well, if enough people thought that and did that, maybe it's not a waste of a vote. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Like maybe we'll we will see the biggest kind of dent in an independent. I have no idea. I don't know what he's polling at right now, but I do anecdotally see a lot of people who like him. Yeah. You know, more so than any independent candidate in my lifetime. I think, yeah, totally. For yeah, independent. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know what Ross Perot, I think Ross Perot. And That's why I was uh, laughing at one thing about the Super Bowl is when Taylor Swift, everyone was saying that uh, she was going to announce her thing to Biden. Yeah. I kept saying, I was like loving the idea of that. If they finish the thing, he wins the Super Bowl and then proposes and then she stands up and endorses Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he's already out, she's yeah. like, he's back in, back and I'm in endorsing him, and I'm endorsing <laughs> just like some random Taylor Swift endorsement. Yeah, <laughs> that was like that would be great. Um, but okay, so th- this is what he said in the thing, and he said it's interesting to me just because it's such a barometer of everything. She, he, John Stewart sort of said he was talking about the Super Bowl and the conspiracy theories, and he was sort of saying, well, that's what maybe happens because the right politicizes everything, and you're like, yeah, that's true, that's kind of happening a little bit, but <laughs> yeah. also it's like. Do you, where do you think, what do you think, have you been, what are you looking at for the last six years? Like, politicizing everything. Have you heard of movies? Everything is politicized. Like, you are literally getting in trouble on your politics show because you're not political, on your comedy politics show that you're not political enough. Yeah, you're not political enough. So it's like, yeah. Which is maybe what he needs to. It's not an accurate criticism to be like, this side is only doing this and nothing. You have to, you have to literally, you have to be like. It's a. Uh, it's walking around with a blind cane when you see the stuff that happens on the left wing, and then you take the blind cane off when there's something on the right wing, and then you have to put the blind cane back on yeah. when there's something funny on the left. Like that's what they want him to do. Yeah. Also, the show's ratings are down seventy five percent since he left. So it's like it's not even as relevant anymore. Whatever power he had when he left in twenty fifteen. Yeah, it's hard to get the thing back. It's it's not coming back. He's only there for Mondays. I don't even know who the Tuesday to Friday hosts are. Mm-hmm. Are they just doing the rotating cast again? It's just uh, like yeah, Cost, I think that's like what Costa it is. and Dulce yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. So it's like it's the show's just slowly well, dying. They're not gonna get they're not gonna be happy unless someone's like a raving lunatic. <laughs> Great. <laughs> well, you're like sure. I a mean sm- I, they need you to be like a really, really smug raving lunatic. So essentially the Daily Show has does the same numbers as Tim Cast or Jimmy Dore. Like at this point. And and it's yeah, one's like way longer and every exactly. day. Exactly. No, I mean they're all every night, but you're like it's just for them to be like, Oh, John Stewart can he's not changing shit anymore, okay? This is a show that people don't really watch. It's cool that he's back for some maybe nostalgia or whatever, but for them to be like, Oh my god, this is life or death, just like I don't know. Well it's just it's it's interesting to me the the way people talk about it because it's so like here, for example, right? The only thing I can say is those people who are mad about it will not have jobs in six months, likely. So that's one thing. You'll be, you'll be, uh, you'll be. Did you see in Canada? Yeah, that, if he was funny, thing? he would do that. He was like, I got a, bad, a bunch of bad press from people that won't have jobs <laughs> in four months. Yeah, four months. Like, I mean, they just did that thing where they in Canada, Bell uh, cut for like forty eight hundred jobs or forty eight hundred jobs. Really? After they got a bunch of money from the Trudeau government. Woo! Literally, like Trudeau government was like, "Hey, here's a bunch of money. Like, you don't no direction for what to do because now all the conspiracy nuts are out where they go. Oh, so Trudeau literally just like bought the media. Then and everybody's like, oh, there's they did it to like keep jobs and then they went and cut all these jobs. And then so what did he pay for? And you go, oh, he just paid for favorable press. Yes, because obviously if you give all this money, like mil- tens of millions of dollars, then yeah, you're probably not gonna get a lot of like negative. The commie state broadcaster. From the, yeah, this isn't from the commie. This is from Bell. Oh yeah, but well, even, you're trying to turn them into. On you're the, tr- trying to turn all of them. You go here. Here's a bunch of money. Don't say bad shit about me, or that's gonna end. Mm-hmm. And anyways, and so and then all these people, like people, journalists, just can't really get it through their minds that they're not as important or needed as they once were, even like recently. I think they are. Is my point is I think they are equally needed, if not more needed. It's just that like none of them actually want to do it. Yeah, yeah, they don't want to do it. Yeah, they just want to <laughs> gossip. They want to like go- have gossip because like doesn't really take a lot of work to have an opinion. And it's sort of a longer game to, it's sort of a longer game to try to be honest, you know? This episode is sponsored by a favorite of ours, and that is Blue Chew, ladies and gentlemen. A unique online service that delivers the same active ingredient as Viagra Cialis Levitra, but in a chewable tablet and at a fraction of the cost. For me, I've been a Blue Chew man, I'm currently a Blue Chew man. 
I've been telling people about it on the podcast before we were sponsored about it. Great that. product. As Great people company. know, yes, you can take them anytime, day or night. Sometimes what you want to do, this is a industry secret, mm. not medical advice. Not medical advice. I want to take the blue chew the night before. Oh. You know what I mean? Just uh, to get yourself in the, the in head the headspace. Space, right. <laughs> and as mentioned before, it's, it's a great muscles. insurance policy. Huge insurance policy, Huge. my friend. Be ready whenever the opportunity arises. The best part, it's all done online, so you're not going to visit with the doctor. No awkward conversations, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA, prepared and shipped to your door in a discreet package. Maybe you're having some trouble. Maybe you're just trying to lay it down. Maybe it's a special someone and this is the first time. There's some nerves going, you know? Mm -hmm. You want to put some respect on your name. Yes, sir. And Blue Chew is the solution for you. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com and chew it and do it is the catchphrase. We've got a special offer for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use the promo code BOYSCAST at checkout. You're just paying the $5 shipping. This bone's on us, basically. <laughs> bluechew.com promo code BOYSCAST to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. Thanks to Blue Chew for sponsoring the BOYSCAST. You ever tried to break a bad habit and felt like you're climbing Mount Everest in flip-flops? It happens! And we've been there, too. And that's why, here's a breath of fresh air for you. Fume. It's not about giving up. It's about switching up. Fume takes your bad habit and simply makes it better, healthier, and a lot more enjoyable. So instead of vapor, fume uses flavored air. Instead of electronics, fume uses completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, fume uses delicious flavors. It's an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. It's fun to do. Uh, Canadian company, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool. And on top of that, they are fun to fidget with because they have like... Uh, they sort of make it, uh, which is a way that's fun to play with, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I always do it when I'm editing. That's why. You get it. Spin, it. spin them around your hands. Exactly. Instead of bad, fume is good. It's a habit you're free to enjoy and makes replacing your bad habit easy. It comes with an adjustable dial and is designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting. Tastes great. Feels cool. They look very cool. You look like a diplomat holding this thing. Mm. Fume has just released the magnetic stand for your fume, so there's no more losing it around the house. It's built with fidgeting in mind. You can spin your fume around on it. Start the year off right with the good habit by going to tryfume.com slash boyscast to getting the journey pack today. And Fume is giving the listeners of this show 10% off when you use the code boyscast to help making starting the good habit that much easier. For example, right now, Oklahoma is banning consensual nudes before marriage, which is objectively hilarious. Yeah, I don't even know. How, how do you police that? This is the thing. <laughs> like checkpoints? Well, like I, th do you, do you I checkpoints? think you have a guy that's like the nude cop, <laughs> <laughs> which I think should be a TV show. Nude cop? Well, I mean, ideally, he's, you know, getting hotties, but I think it's, that's what happened. You're like, these eyes, you don't want to know what this is. See, <laughs> this guy... <laughs> You essentially have a nude checkpoint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just smoking Matthew cigarettes. Matthew McConaughey in True Detective Season 1. <laughs> yeah. Dude, yeah, you get put on the fucking, you get put on like the wall, the like area of like where all the Walmart employees live and you're like, I'd rather be on child porn than this. <laughs> I spent three years on child porn doing do nearly as much damage to my psyche. <laughs> I, again, I don't like a state. How does a state enforce this on a state level? It is a. I, it's it's obviously wacky, like a like, is virtue. This, is this law. the furry guy? This is the same as the same dude as. The, I wonder if this is another law. one of his. <laughs> well, it's actually. I think a lot of these kind of weird little laws are actually kind of working. You know what I mean? It prohibits unlawful pornography defined by the proposed bill as visual material which contains sexual intercourse, which is normal or perverted. Ooh, that's in the that's thing. The stuff I like. <laughs> Even if it's perverted. More specifically, depictions of oral sex, bestiality. So obviously, any of that. I mean, bestiality is already illegal, so you don't need a separate well, it might not law be in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> Masturbation. Well, he, the other thing is if a girl ever sent you like a nude, now you're just like, you know, I mean, yeah, for sure, if you want to do that i mean I, or i put you in jail for life 
I don't. Yeah, again, I don't. I don't understand how this is. What like, do you get? I think you. Do you go to? J- imagine just being in jail too, and you're just like, how do you? What get are you caught? in for? That's more. I want to know how do they catch this? Well, the same thing. I mean, it's a le- like technically, it's illegal for people under 18 to send each other nudes, and they still right. do, right? Yeah. So I mean, there has been cases where people get. I guess it just gets out. Yeah, it gets out revenge porn or whatever. Like, like surely they're not proposing that just in the state of Oklahoma. I guess there's a new narc. Get, yeah, the, but they're not going to get Apple to like, hey, we need a record of every. Well, that would be cr- crazy. I yeah. think no, but I think you're going to have a guy on the beat, and he's like, <laughs> the nudes never stop, man. Let's see. Open these just totally thing. Open the phones up. Let me see them. It's like stop and Nudes, frisk. It's, it's <laughs> Or whatever, like car- it's like carding people, you know. He goes instead of your ID, he goes P- crack the phone open, and they go, "Officer, I forgot my password." And you go, "Yeah, <laughs> heard that before." Open it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Camera roll. Camera roll. There's basically a nude narc, and then you have yeah the guy that his whole deal is just walking around, you know. <laughs> and you go all the nude cops here. Everyone knows you fucking put the phone on lock. You have everyone's frantically putting the photos in the other yeah, like yeah. other folder where you can't. <laughs> The cop thinks it's my first rodeo. You think I don't know about the <laughs> deleted folder? I had a friend who was a, used to uh, be a drug dealer, and he had this phone where, because uh, he had like all this like shit in it or whatever, like illegal stuff. And he goes, "What kind of illegal stuff?" Like drug dealing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like just like whatever texts. And he had a thing where uh, if it had a passcode. It was like an Android phone, and it had this passcode, but it had a second passcode. And if you entered that passcode, it just wiped the phone. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> he had a cyanide pill for his phone. Yeah, he just, yeah, he just had to like literally like he goes yeah. If it ever like came down to it, like I just enter this this. They go, what's your passcode? And then just that is incredible. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And then you just say like oh, I don't even know what's happening. My oh, phone's uh, yeah, fucking up what's right now. On? This, yeah, what's going on? This is wacky. <laughs> yeah, I had, so, had so many nudes in there. Ah, damn it! I think every guy could use one yeah. of those. <laughs> She goes, what's your password? I'm going through your phone. He goes, it's, um... Yo, that's so hilarious if a guy was getting booked. She goes, go through my phone. You go, be my guest. What's going on here? You go, what did you do? Yeah, what did you do? <laughs> you dumb bi- <laughs> You fucking erased all my phone? Are you fucking yeah, yeah, kidding me was- right now? <laughs> I would really turn the books on her own. She's like, sorry, I just thought you were cheating on me. I don't, I just, I'm sorry. You go, you fuck, you know how long it's going to take me to get all this shit back? Oh my God, I have a fucking important work stuff on there. Oh my God, all my contacts and everything. What did you do? And then you fucking Kaiser Soze away. You just start to stop limping <laughs> as you walk away. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that's an awesome fucking yeah, app yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Unless you do it accidentally, you know, drunk. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which Barnaby I'm, style, forget your own. Yeah, you that's good. I mean, that is my same friend who accidentally took a l- concentrated acid because he thought it was not concentrate, <sighs> and so he thought he was taking two hits of acid, and he took two hundred hits of acid. Wild boy. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, hey, I know a few people that acid did them good, and they're never the same ever since. He's literally. I remember. I, I think I talked about, it, but like we had nobody saw him for like years, and then he came back, and someone was like, "He's like a little off." He go, "Yeah." He, he had this little incident with some acid. And it really just messed you up for life. I mean, you're not nobody's supposed to take 200 hits of acid. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> no. Okay, so, and you're like, yeah, obviously that's kind of funny. But then, the you have to you have to be like, okay, so that's a funny thing that's happening. You know, the Republican side of the aisle, and then you have to be like, Indiana College cancels bondage course that was taught by <laughs> rope expert and teach students how to navigate hip, groin, and thigh after parents complained. And you have to go. Well, obviously, nothing weird about that. No, it's like, is there some <laughs> way we could just split the difference here? <laughs> Maybe less you go, that rope crazier. bondage courses. <laughs> like I could have in college, I could have seen like you know some of the like chicks do that at a. Like a not school thing. Well, there's got to be a cheaper like, hey, way to like get da- it. No, but they'll be like, oh, there's like some some chicks are like, you know, getting really starting to feel themselves, and they're like, oh, there's like a thing downtown. You like sign up for it. Like the the. That's how they start you. Sex shop. All the girls that do one of those courses within three weeks, they're fucking hanging from hooks on their back. <laughs> Because the girl, the gr- once the girls get into the culture, they get into you know what I mean. They get they get pole carried, dancing. They get carried away, man. Well, that the pole dancing's the early one. They start with the oh yeah, just tying my oh yeah, just got my <laughs> rope course here. And then within three months, you're suspended from hawks with a fucking you know yeah. noose around your neck. But my point was, it's like you have to read this and be like, 
Yeah, and now obviously pretty normal on the liberal side. You go, there's <laughs> nothing weird going on here. Yeah. It's just you got to feel for those guys who are just said, you know, who are kind of just still telling their kids, yeah, you got to go to college. College is important. <laughs> yes, I'll pay seventy thousand dollars a year. It's just very important to me that you get a college education. You go, yeah, I'm signing up for bondage class, buddy. That wasn't even the wackiest ones. There was some other wacky stuff, but like, to your point. When you go 75K, so a lot of these colleges are that much. I don't know how this much exactly is, but at least you're paying like what, four or 5K, uh, sim- uh, like a, a, a course probably? Something like that. It's for, for in the US. Okay, it's but there's got, there's got to be a cheaper way to learn your bondage course. Of course. Like, hey, there's a guy who'll teach you for 50 bucks in his garage down Head the street. Head on down to the wharf. <laughs> Old sailor Tommy over there. Do it for 10 bucks. Yeah, guy knows how to, you know, he knows every knot. <laughs> trying to learn a double Nelson there? <laughs> Legitimately, so you go. Well, yeah, for sure. I mean, again, these colleges have, are businesses, and they're just trying to maximize. Like when a college starts but to maximize that. profits, you get rope bondage course. Well, that's. <laughs> well, I think this is some wacky professors that are tenured that like that are you know. But you get a credit for it. No, no, I'm saying the who the professor decide to start this course probably. But I'm saying the someone at the school an administrator goes yes that is valid yeah, because they're fucking the scared of these people. Some girl walks in with like a blue haired mohawk and all that sort of shit, and she's like, "We got an idea for a course." You go, "Yes, sir." And whatever. You I, don't, I, mean, I, 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 I not, actually sir? disagree. I don't think it's that. I think they wa- a blue haired chick walks in and tells another blue haired chick <laughs> that hey, we're adding this fucking bondage course. She goes, can we make it worth two credits? You go, maybe not yet. Let's just one credit for now. <laughs> That's true. It's blue. Yeah, it's, it's blue hair to not, blue hair. It's not some like fucking Don Draper kind of guy being like, I don't know about that. It's like another blue hair. No, she walks into the she walks into the office, gets stuck in the door for a little bit. They got to <laughs> grease her out, and she get goes, the grease, <laughs> get the grease. And then she goes, okay, so what do you want to talk about me? It doesn't matter. Whatever you want, yeah, I'm good for want. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they. <laughs> okay, imagine you were taking like a course that. Like uh, a CPR course, for example, right? Uh Like, you know, what do those cost? Like 600 bucks? You take a driving school course, 600 bucks. Yeah. Probably a rope thing. You probably do that 600 bucks at the local, you know, YMCA type of thing. yeah. Yeah, so you're literally paying like... 20 times market rates for these courses because you're getting a college to a credit that that's where yeah, the, but the, well, what a scam huh for sure although i will say though not to i don't want to maybe maybe we've a little too soon been poo-pooing this because there might be a couple <laughs> eager gents who okay go, i'd also like to sign up for the bondage course because that's where all the whores are that's true like this is like remember gender studies you go yeah good good ratio Didn't work these though. are legitimately whores it doesn't work anymore though i don't maybe that's because you're you're fishing in the wrong pond no it's gonna be autistic fats i promise you mostly know, but <laughs> uh, you, yeah I guess. some guys are like yeah and <laughs> <laughs> literally let they let me hog tie them <laughs> Yeah, autistic fats. That's just gonna put an apple in their mouth while I fucking rail her from the back yeah. tied up. Yeah. With a jimmy knot. And they like it when you just leave them all tied up. They like the challenge of getting out of it. It is <laughs> It is, uh, but that'll just, but that'll be the thing that ruins it too. Is one guy, one bro from the football team will sign up, and then that secret. Will well, then out. they have to start teaching the guy version, where they're like, "Hey, we're learning how to jack off with a belt around your neck." <laughs> <laughs> the telling your dad that's what you learned at college. Everyone, grab your lemons. Well, that's you going to the job market afterwards, right? <laughs> so you basically finish your course, and you're like, I, you know, you're applying for your job as a you know marketing admin. Yeah, and they're like, "What are you doing?" You're just like. <laughs> Wouldn't look at that. <laughs> You're basically a fucking clown doing balloon animals. Essentially. <laughs> yeah, that's very niche. You ever jerk off with a belt around your neck? The guy goes, no. He goes, hmm, okay. Uh, I was going <laughs> to... All right. Uh, he goes, assuming I did, how can we profit from this? Do you know when you have your two orbits t- <laughs> tied up in the side of the room? Yeah. Uh, no, I, I don't know about that. You go, okay, so uh, in any case, I don't know anything other than that. You know, I mean, sometimes you'll have them around the, a pulley on the roof, so you can kind of... <laughs> Just them. I don't know how that could really. <laughs> I could set up a pulley to fucking. There's, that's some physics, I guess, goes into that. That's how, yeah, because what you do is you basically have the one girl laying on the ground, and then you have the fat girl, and then you have her arms hooked up to pulleys, and then you basically pull the thing, and it makes her slap the other girl's <laughs> ass. <laughs> this is <laughs> something. And then you you, that, you explain to a boss, you're like, you know, obviously. So is that going to be any of use in this <laughs> department? It's mostly just creative <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, so you're learning how to tie knots. Yeah. Which they, is that is a useful skill, but they're getting forced to cancel it because some of the parents weren't happy about it. Yeah, I would as you. But know. okay, so the, what I was going to say was there was the Christian one that was before. Remember that they canceled at the Christian college. So this is these yeah, are popping had, up all over the place. This was a dominatrix place. thing at the Christian college. 
An event describes bondage as a form of consensual and recreational sex play. It just seems like something that you learn at the local sex club at a fucking, <laughs> you know, 1 a.m. course with some dude that's like, what polyamorous. What faculty is this under? Oh, well, there's different ones. That's what they actually explain this. So $79,000 a year for the Ivy League course catalog. So that means 80 grand. So that means it's 10 grand you're paying to learn how to jack off with a belt around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> when I was a kid, you did that for free. You went down to the Goodwill, you bought a belt, dollar tops, probably someone else's belt that they jacked off with and they died. Well, here's a question. How much was Scouts? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you're le legitimately learning the same stuff you learn in Scouts, which my guess would be couldn't be more than five, five hundo. There's no Jew Scouts. Mm, that's true. Yeah, it's Jews can't go to Scouts? Well, I think they can. I just don't think they did. Well, they can. But then we, they we just go to like pre-CPA courses. Well, the Jews go to scouts and girl guides and they start selling the cookies for <laughs> fucking, start selling off-market girl guide cookies <laughs> door to door. Because <laughs> there's a little bit of newspaper in my cookies. You know, that's what brings the costs down. <laughs> Excuse me. These cookies have been shaved down 30%. <laughs> the edges are shaved. Just shrinkflationing your, your, Jew, yeah, your uh, girl guide cookies. Don't know what you're talking about. 79K a year. And for the 2023 semester, it includes classes on black and queer and leather. Yeah. <laughs> this is, so this is actually kind of getting your money's worth here. <laughs> you also get the black and queer and leather. The guy goes, you tell telling me my son paid 80 grand to learn how to tie a knot? You go, my friend, my <laughs> come friend, on, my come friend. Come on, That was just one of the modules. Black leather BDSM material culture. Fat, the F word. So there's literal a course on being fat. Okay. You're paying fucking 80K for your for a degree in being fat. You can definitely what, get what that one your, for free. What is your degree, though, when you leave this? I like, think it's one of them's called Anthropology of Religion, Fetishism and Decolonization. Fetishism <laughs> and Decolonization. <laughs> Literally, if you walked into my fucking coffee shop and you go, hey, I'd like to be a barista, and I go, oh, okay. Yeah, like you don't need education. You go, I have a, actually, I have a, ma a master's, a master's. In, in fetishism and decolonization. I'd be like, get the fuck <laughs> out of here. With that shit. You want me to Take that down to Starbucks, okay? Yeah, these people definitely are going to learn how to decolonize a cup of Joe. That's for sure. That is probably, though, that is the career path. You take this and then you go work at Starbucks. <laughs> you, you learn how to decolonize the coffee filter yeah. when you change them. But, like, that's because they're all just. <laughs> <laughs> you decolonize the water in the janitor's bucket. <laughs> That's such a crappy what degree. A waste of. <laughs> so I guess it's anthropology. It's a BA, obviously. Yeah. But you're getting a BA and uh, yeah, BA and BS. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Bunch of turkeys. I would also. That's so crazy. Dating that girl too. Is your parents like, what are you taking? You go. Sh, 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 don't ask. Yeah, I don't think that girl's dating. She's a taking. Guy. She's taking a <laughs> BA. <laughs> well, she's dating. Uh, a, she's not dating one guy. She's anyways. dating a, a woman that is now a guy. Yeah. That's true. Fetishism and decolonization. Um, yeah, you can get a degree in being fat. I mean, well, I guess your degree in being fat will be helpful when you work at McDonald's and get free food. <laughs> you get you you get your discount at McDonald's. Your degree in fat's going to be coming. At in some handy. point, you got to be like these. Uh, when when do the investigations start into these colleges as no longer kind of like upholding their and no longer they're getting like the subsidies their from the government, fiduciary duties, <laughs> and just general like. Stewards of young minds, you you're you're scamming them. Well, one hundred percent. That's what I'm saying. Them. Like, at what point is there like a thing where you go, hey, like these are kind of turning into these like scams. They didn't start as scams, <laughs> kind of like the the Madoff thing. You go, it didn't start as a scam, but it's becoming one. At the job fair, hi, I'm looking for the <laughs> fetishism and decolonization job booths. <laughs> Well, the funny. I mean, the joke's on us because it's probably like, yeah, oh, uh, that's uh, the uh, Comedy Central's tables over there. So, if you yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're hiring writers for all their shows. Well, it's religion too. So you meet like a religious person. You're like, well, I actually studied religion. No, oh, what what aspects of it? The <laughs> religion of gaping, <laughs> religion of fetishism and decolonization. Yeah, <laughs> decolonization. <laughs> and we just how to remove how to how to deal with post gape symptoms. Ugh. 
yuck. Okay, so that, you know, so I'm just like, you have to pretend. My point is to the people yelling at Jon Stewart, it's like, it's a hard job to have to pretend that that's just fucking normal as the yeah. day is night. Hey, man. Day is long. He's, he's fucking <laughs> really just just grooving them down the center of the That's the too. hardest job ever to be like a just like a, a left wing combinator that's just talking about how crazy the right wing is and we're just normal as fuck. Yeah, and he's and he can't because he at the end of the day is a real comedian. So he's like, hey. Can I just say they're try both, his best? They're I guess. both old. <laughs> and then I go, no. Bad. You have to say he's old, but Trump's older, and it's like it doesn't even work because he was kind of like, even in that, he's like, oh, uh, you know, Joe Biden's really old, but Trump's really old and even worse memory. And you're like, well, that's not true. Like, yeah, Trump, Trump sure. doesn't have a worse memory than Joe Biden. That's no anybody incorrect. Yeah, incorrect. And also, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you found one data point that goes, yeah, Trump. And also, the context of the Daily Show thing I was meaning to say is, it's a deposition of donald trump right and there might be some element of this with the biden thing as well but like they're being deposed when they were showing trump having a bad memory when he's having a bad memory he's they like they added a clip it's of that. like yeah but i'm saying it's, it, imagine it's like about. yeah yeah but it's like imagine like saying uh john Gotti goes hey do you remember when you fucking killed those people he goes i uh, no recollection he goes ah, look at john Gotti. he's can't got a bad memory shit, dude. can't remember anything <laughs> look at all these mafioso dudes they can't remember anything crazy Crying memory on well, these i guess guys. if you join the mob you get a bad memory out of it that's wild <laughs> What are, and it's like, no, Trump's trying to save his ass. And he goes, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, it's not, he doesn't have a bad memory. He's trying to not go to jail. <laughs> and I think that might be what Biden was doing, too. Yeah. Biden legitimately... But I'm not even just talking about the deposition. I'm talking about, or, like, with Biden, I'm talking about just in general. Just in general, yeah. I mean, I'm not even saying he has a bad memory. I'm saying he probably has an average memory for a fucking 81-year-old. Year yeah, exactly. But you're just like, to say that he doesn't is like, well, okay, what planet are you on? Yeah. I mean, my memory is worse than it was... 10 years ago i've always had a bad one yeah but i was like <laughs> i'm like you know it's definitely not as good as it was i don't think your memory sharpens with age i literally think that's why i can't spell is because i have a bad memory possibly yeah. i think i my brain's hardwired to only pay uh, only uh, uh make note of things if i if i deem them to be important <laughs> sure i mean i have bad spatial awareness i was actually just recently thinking about this because i don't I've lived in New York for four years now, and I know some streets. I don't know what any of like the highways are here, and I take them every day. Yeah, you know, I, I, I know. To, I, I have to make an actual conscious note of like putting it in my brain. Like sometimes you'll take a like you know leave the studio, and then you'll take a, I'll grab a taxi, and then yeah. they'll, they'll be like, uh, "What bridge do you want to take?" And I'm just like. Pfft. You, yeah, I don't know. Oh, I grab my phone and I guess search. I don't know. And I'm like, there's only two options for me. And I go, I don't know. Well, the fucking, I'll tell you what, the Uber drivers I get in the car to say, what bridge do you want to buy? Because these guys are, <laughs> these guys are up to something. <laughs> Actually, you know what? The, apparently, all the Uber the Brooklyn's for sale today. Now. Uh, I don't know if they're going through with it, and I don't know if there will be scabs or anything. But apparently, the Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash, specifically on Valentine's Day, are going on strike. Why? Because they want higher pay or like a higher, you know, portion of the money. And so they go, we're going on strike on Valentine's Day, which really bung some shit up. I guess there's, there's still cabs, though. Who cares? I guess. But I guess the thing is, there's not enough cabs. Like if every, if there's the same amount of demand minus all the Ubers. Just, list. But well, what just be everywhere else. But I think what day. happens is Uber goes, yeah, well, then we just increase the fares. And then a bunch of people will be like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And then they'll just kind of force people to scab because the prices will skyrocket and people will still take Yeah, them. supply and demand. They'll figure this one all out. But I think the people in charge of that strike probably don't really pay too much attention to those kind of concepts. No. Do you know what the other thing, of the reason I think that uh, partially is that I'm so bad at like memorizing member I think I'm naturally a guy that probably uh, doesn't notice things and stuff like that but then you know kind of doing so many things my whole life uh, you know kind of always having a job that you're like doing like lots of things at once yeah I've always like I've almost worked really hard to train myself to focus yeah so I'm always like so focused on one thing that on top of the fact that I'm naturally kind of loopy and shit like that, I'm always like super hyper trying to be super hyper on one thing. And I've trained myself to like tune out the noise and you're like, well, yeah, except sometimes that noise is like relevant. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. Oh, it's like you've, I've tuned out the noise. You mean like the, st every street that you live, <laughs> you tune out the street you live on. You're like, I don't have fucking room for that shit, dude. Uh, this brain's working on something right now. I mean, dude, there's been, uh, I think twice now where, I uh, tuned out the noise. The directions to your house. You're like, yes, my friend. No, I think twice now I've like gone. I can't remember where, but like I went to my old house. I thought I was going just home. accidentally. Just accidentally, just like literally, I was like not 
I was just walking. I know people think and I'm totally bad like, and I might be worse than you, but you're up there. Yeah, yeah. And like I just wasn't paying attention. I was just like thinking about something or listening to a podcast and I'm just walking home and just muscle memory kind of ticks over and then I'm at my old house. I can easily, you probably march in full speed there too. Oh yeah, yeah, I rip over there. You know why? It's because you come across of like sort of like a voice of reason type of guy. I am a voice of reason. Yeah, you come across as that type of guy, but in reality, you're just like, you know, uh, Pouring fucking soup into your cereal. <laughs> like, <laughs> you are doing wacky things sometimes. Not that bad, but yeah, I do, I do some stuff. Yeah, trying to trying to pay for your you know meal with like uh with your bank with your fucking uh, gym card. Yeah, yeah, with my gym card. Goes, does, this, does this work? You guys don't take gym cards. Um. Well, then here's uh, uh another one. The other way is in Russia. Which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. The Putin basically, because of all their gay laws, yep. uh, two lesbians were like making out in a photo, and then the police like arrested them, and then they had to do this big public apology, groveling for their forgiveness and stuff like that. Yeah, hold on, let me just pull up this photo just to see where I stand on this. Ooh, 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 hold on. This is an abomination, Ryan. <laughs> Those are two rockets just having a smooch. What's going on, Putin? If you're watching this, Putin, let the rockets smooch. Well, I was thinking that that would be Tucker if he went to that and he goes, you know, remember he asked <laughs> yeah, for the yeah, journalist? Yeah. He goes, <laughs> at the end, <laughs> wouldn't that be great? At the end of the interview, he's like, and I just have to ask you, those two rockets that were smooching, would you, as a show of good faith, let them go? Yeah. <laughs> between, <laughs> goes, I don't know. Maybe I, it's, it's not really. He goes, just look, just as a show of faith to the West and just <laughs> Maybe to just you I'm know, not asking you to increase morale in your country. Just allow the two rockets to smooch. Listen, if it was TikTok. two land whales smooching, I'm between me and you. My, listen, if your hands are tied, your hands are tied. And then he goes, Tucker. If it was two land whales smooching, they'd be dead already. So. <laughs> this was me showing mercy. <laughs> <laughs> they'd be breaking bricks in Siberia now. So, <laughs> me. I'm not such a bad guy. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> if it was two land wheels, <laughs> <mission. laughs> yeah. yeah, just uh, just the judge, the judge there, like, hey, let's just see that video again. There, if you know. that's the other thing about them making nudes illegal. It's like maybe it's just like a plan for some, you know, judge to be like getting to see all these nudes. I you know, guess. it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> that evidence locker is fucking lit. And in Russia, about. probably all the court cases, it's like probably not a girl, a lot of girls that are like high powered lawyers too. So it's just a bunch of dudes in there. No, I mean also their whole legal system is like a sham. Like it's you know it's uh, at the end of the day, mm. as much as we want to have like this legal system in America, which we you know is uh, like I had this guy on my show who was uh, he's like a libertarian Russian dude, and he's like they he, it's like if he steps foot in Russia, he's like they they arrest me and they put me on like this show trial, and he's like I have a lawyer and they have like if you were an outsider watching this, you'd be like oh this is a normal. He's like it's not, it's not, it's a fucking sham trial. So the outcome is predetermined. I'm guilty, and the no lesbos are gonna get the sham trial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was thinking that definitely Tucker. If he was gonna, if Tucker was a really wanted to make a, you know, break the internet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Damn. I mean, he had to pick his spots. I'm sure. If, I'm sure that Wall Street Journal is, uh, Journal uh, reporters, like, you know, honestly, I I understand Tucker that you chose them over me. <laughs> And they said the pair were told by the police that could harm the psyche of minors. However, they said the psyche of minors <laughs> liked it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. I guess uh, whatever. They're saying like we don't want to show the kids all this gay shit or whatever. That's how it goes in Russia. And yeah, I, obviously I, I we don't want to show them two dudes kissing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone can agree on that. It's gross. Yes. No one wants to see two dudes kissing. <laughs> but two, And we don't even want to see two gross chicks kissing. One exception. Yeah. I don't even necessarily want to see one hot chick, one gross chick. Yeah, exactly. Gotta... I don't even want to see a guy and a girl kissing. How about a hot chick kissing a mirror so it looks like she's making out with her twin? Can we at least allow that? It will be accepted. <laughs> it... <laughs> Technically, it's not anything gay or nothing. It's just a chick kissing a mirror. I will allow. <laughs> Thank you. So, Thank you for that. That one, you're just like, okay, you could look at that and be like, you know, fucking crazy anti-gay stuff down in Russia. But yeah. then over and then on the side where you have to pretend nothing weird's going on, mm -hmm. five transgender students dominate the volleyball court at women's uh, college varsity game. <laughs> Wacky shit happened in Canada. This was Canada? Yeah, this is Canada. Of course. This is all Where was it? Rebel News. I think this is in like Orangeville or something. That's fucking hilarious, man. All five? Or maybe not. No, all two, five. three on one team, two on another team. <laughs> 
So and then and then hell team, yeah. And I think it's they play eight aside or something or five aside. I don't know how many are on each side, but Let's the, fucking the go. one that had the extra biological man. One, one, yeah, dude, that is so fucking all funny. David Menzies is covering all the shit, but yeah, yeah, it's like uh, it's it's insane. Well, this is on the Daily Mail, not uh, so. But it's from it's it's for sure him. It's it's. You're saying he broke the story. He, he's the one who's breaking all these stories. How uh, does he break? How does he find out? He gets tipped he gets, off. He gets tipped off. I mean, if I if you were, I get, I could see a parent of like one of the girls being like, "Hey, there's seven people on the court, and five of them were dudes." Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. That is, that seems like people playing a prank. Yeah. They are on society. And appara- yeah. <laughs> and apparently all the girls kept having to like sit on the bench because those guys are obviously the star players. Of course. I mean, again, do you want to win or do you want to lose? Exactly. And you have to sort of watch. Uh, for, uh, some t- uh, some point, once you've allowed this, then you have to start making decisions about the sport, right? You go, okay. Have, they need one where it's just like, I'd like to see one race that's like matters where it's just exclusively what? trans. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the boys make a comeback. <laughs> yeah. Should have let you finish that. Um, yeah. I mean, it's. It, 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 I don't. The crazy thing is, these. I don't know if these will add up to some sort of critical mass where people will finally, like, there'll be that. I think most people are already sort of uh, off it, but it's like the governments are not off it. I guess, but it's, you know, it's. So what's crazier? You know what I mean? You're just like, Putin says, you know, no fucking gay kissing, or it's like. The girls' volleyball team's all dudes. Like, they're both crazy. Oh, I mean, if you have to ask me, I'd rather, much rather the girls' volleyball team all dudes because that's a win for the dudes. One, go, yeah, exactly. No question. You so, said it. You said it. it. You know, there's nothing to add, there's man. You add fucking nailed it. It's a win for the dudes. <laughs> it's a win for the dudes. Nobody's watching girls' volleyball. I mean, I guess the beach volleyball. That's the problem, though. Beach volleyball is the domain of the perv, of the beach volleyball. You're making a point. Thonged up. So it's like if you if, if you I'm, if I'm jacking off to some dude's ass without knowing, now you're now you're now we're losing. So dude, if you show up to the girls' volleyball game and you're just like you know some perv that t- t- times his beach visits with the girls' volleyball sure. champion, you go, yeah. oh, were they here? I didn't even notice. And then you they get on the court and you go, oh, that one's a little big, yeah. huh? It's <laughs> quite a bulge on <laughs> the front a there. Big bulge on that one. Pretty big hands <laughs> on that puppy. Oh. What in tarnations? <laughs> yeah, 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 they're that that thirsty ones. That that Adam, Adam's apples really <laughs> a lot of grunting really doing from that overtime one. right there, huh? All right, deep grunt on that one. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, the wig falls off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a tough one. It's tough. Well, it's interesting because they did. So that was another. It was a DeSantis thing, and basically, uh, DeSantis uh, made a rule that we haven't sort of got there was a couple of these trans things because we sort of uh, been avoiding covering it so they've just mm-hmm. been like adding up all the things so yeah, I just have um, a little segment on sure. all of them so we haven't really talked about this stuff in like five or six weeks but oh. there was so DeSantis basically is saying that they have to put their uh, biological sex on the driver's license right yeah um, and the I think uh, I think that uh, the, there was like obviously it's probably like just a political thing but I guess there are some reasons they're saying like you know whatever like if you go to the doc like if you get medical treatment they need to know which one you are blah 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 I don't know sure. but it's obviously probably just like a political thing but the the, the trans activists are doing um, a big protest and what they're doing is the because they're saying 37% of trans people have been harassed because of having the wrong ID uh, a wrong gender on their ID. Okay. And they basically lied down for 37 seconds or minutes. Yeah, they lied down for 37 minutes. So it's pretty anti-climactic protest. 37 seconds. Of like, Come on, guys. That's it? Well, they're basically just taking a nap, right? That's yeah, the protest. Yeah, yeah. But I was kind of... Hot, maybe in the hot sun, though. Like, I get if you're a trans person and you don't like it, but... It's like kind of one of those things where it's like I get the like arguing for it and be like, listen, I changed my whole thing. I'm that I'm this now, whatever, right? Yeah. But on the other side of it, you're just like the idea that you are getting uh, misgendered probably seems kind of unlikely. Thirty seven percent because if I'm curious okay, the context. Also, yeah, but think about, about most trans people, right? Yeah. If they went to a bar and there, you know, you got some like pretty tall girl. It's like and then hands the ID to like what percentage of uh, of them they would hand the ID to you as the bouncer you'd see biological sex male and you'd be like yeah that makes sense like you know what I mean right yeah yeah, yeah. you wouldn't be like wait a second why is it male here but you're a woman they'd probably be like yeah I was kind of yeah, suspecting but, already and, I, and the harassment is someone goes sorry what's going on here and you go I'm trans and you go oh, okay 
I but I also, yeah. I mean, it must make it hard for fake ID shit. I doubt it gets to that. But uh, do you think there's many trans people that would hand you ID, it says male, and you'd be like confused? You'd probably be like, yeah, I get it. But I guess <laughs> the problem is you're trying to keep out underagers, and then that, because the whole thing is you got to look like your photo, and then now there might be some whole element where you no longer look like your, I don't know. I guess you don't sh- you show your male looking photo and you look like a chick. Because then I smell fucking, Okay, so they're. I smell like a. You're uh, saying it's some the 20. 20- movie here you're saying they're 21 you're trying to no, get you're into like the 18 bar. yeah you're 18 trying to get into a bar you're a bunch of fucking bros from the high school lacrosse Dude, team. that's a good scam and actually. then you grab a bunch of and then you all Dude, grab wigs you wigs. dress up ladybug style and you all say like hey we're of a here are all these chicks ids it's actually a pretty good scheme. Oh, no, guys IDs, and you go, yeah, these are me, but we're trans. You and the boys, just with you wigs on, giving yeah, your fake Michigan IDs? Yeah, and then once you get in, you just fucking take, go to the bathroom, just get all this, take pop all the, the wigs off, off, pop them off, and then it's time to slay puss. <laughs> <laughs> so there's something. There's something there. Yeah, but there, there's a big protest because of that. I don't know if you've seen, uh, you know, Gorlock? I do know Gorlock. Gorlock actually kind of rules. Gorlock's amazing because they just embraced being Gorlock. Gorlock it, Gorlock's funny. Yep. And Gorlock uh, has been going on the shows that, if you don't remember, Gorlock was the like, like five hundred pound like trans uh, influencer. Yep. But they've been going on all these shows, and they're saying that uh, um, declining masculinity is getting out of control, and they're saying that men don't want to be men anymore. <laughs> I mean that's why I said the thing is I, I guess yeah the the funny part is I my lean towards there's no self awareness here to this, this no like, you're wrong Gorlock oh you think it. it is this is like a fuck yeah yeah okay Gorlock is like hangs around and like lets people make fun of her him like her yeah <laughs> I'm gonna go with him on Gorlock 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 like is fine with being sort of like the punching bag because they're like getting more famous and all that sort of True. stuff yeah yeah Gorlock's like down with the cause they're like chill okay. Um, I feel like a lot of men start being men when it comes to the uh, when it comes to the male world. Now, men nowadays are expecting uh, princess treatment, and she's sort of saying that these guys, which two parts of it, one probably is happening that men are you know softer and all that sort of stuff, yep. but two is like, well, yeah, but girls stopped acting like women, so what do you want? Yeah, Putin might be right. Like, you know, Putin might be right. You don't get the door held for it. You know, the minute you're just like, uh, hey, women own more homes than men right now, it's like, okay, well, you're going to be opening the door for those homes yourself, pal. Yeah, no, I mean, also the moment where you're like, oh, I can hold it for myself. I don't need no man. You go, okay. <laughs> and they're like, why are you holding the door for me? You're like, you just said you can hold it for yourself. It's the, if the girls want it back, you know, if the girls want men to be men in on aggregate, you're going to have to drop some of the BS. You know what I mean? Drop the funny business. Yeah. I think the jig has to be up on the funny business. Yeah. And then also they did A and B change rooms. And this was uh, a Catholic high school. Also in Canada. Oh, this was Regina, Saskatchewan. They yeah. are, they're extra wacky over they're, there. I'm eh? telling you, Canada. And it wasn't that wacky when we lived there. I was looking at the Australia stuff. Australia is pretty wacky too. Yeah, they got this shit going on. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's all the Commonwealth countries just... I think it's the smaller countries. My theory is like the same reason why like Portland's always going to be wackier. Uh, The uh, I guess it doesn't hold up because California and New York are pretty wacky. But I generally find like the smaller places don't have enough room for opposition. Yeah. So it's like generally gets wackier. But like Regina, you would think is not some like liberal haven. Well, they. I guess it's all the government though, right? Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. Don't forget, like. When you live in, let's say you live in some place like that where it's not a liberal haven and you're like a liberal psycho, you congregate with the other little psychos, which is in these administration positions. Yes. And then, you know, you're only I mean, around the fact these is, other is fucking that nutcases. School administrators, if you're a public school administrator, you are more likely to be probably like a very liberal woman. Right, and they're on all this stuff. Yeah, and they're it's on all women. the shit, and it's just that's what they're on. So they're doing A and Bs. So, but it's like it doesn't really solve anything. You're like. Okay, so which one do the guys go to and which yeah, one do the girls go to? I thought to? for a second ago, so what is that, like all and then boys? But I don't think that's what it is. Well, that would sort of make sense, but then you would but be... It's not, but it's not... But that wouldn't make sense because, listen, dudes don't care if like you want if girls want to trans the guys and use the men's washroom. No one gives a shit. Yeah. No dudes care. No guy's going to be like, no. what's this person doing here, right? But the other way around, if you go, okay, well, where do the trans people go? You go you go to the B. Is that the one the guys go to? <laughs> We're not, we don't really look at it like that. Is this? Is it almost a smart way to be like, there's girls and everybody else? You're like, biological women are in B? And, and you go, well, why aren't I with biological women? You go, I don't know. We just flipped a coin. Like, you just have to... <laughs> You have to sort of say it like that because it's the same problem whether you do A and B or guys and girls. Yeah. I honestly think maybe 5% of people actually like 
all sex washrooms. Also, a good if there is a pervy guy that's getting mixed up going to the wrong bathroom, you know, that's yeah. a good way to do it and be like, oh, well, it's A and B. I don't know. You got to uh. <laughs> like it's a pretty culpable deniability for pervs that are trying to get mixed up. Well, sure. I mean, yeah. I, I I don't even know. I don't even know who thought this out. Hopefully, hopefully, the last bastion of our ho- our hope is just a bunch of rambunctious. Uh, young preteens who are just that doesn't solve anything. Yeah, just go tear down these fucking signs. Well, you don't have to tear it down. It doesn't change anything. You're like, you go, it's oh, we're not calling them boys and girls. We're calling them A and B. And you go, okay, well, who goes where? <laughs> it's like the problem is it's the exact same problem. And wait till they get the bill for how much this costs. Oh, <laughs> but this, this wasn't like some like, hey, yeah, yeah, we well, get, get the janitor to just fucking throw an A and paint a B on you're there. Here. Yeah, this probably costs you know. 150 grand that is such a fucking <laughs> good point man the guy who designed the a had to you know then they had the guy that you know he sands the a that's, that's another uh, fucking yeah, 50 yeah, right yeah. there yeah the b guy's in a special union it's the b union <laughs> and they don't make b's for cheap anymore <laughs> we're gonna do hey listen if we were doing d and c i'd be out oh i could probably get you in here for under a hundo but <laughs> well no actually what really got costly is the original idea was one and two and then but people were getting mixed oh, up because yeah, they exactly. were going for ones or two and then people are going, oh, can't How about this? Instead 100 of, grand down the trash. Instead of A and B, <laughs> wacky idea, we go with B and G. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's like, I don't get it. What do you, what do you mean B and G? So they're not, they're not connected. Well, yeah, they it's not ringing a bell. I don't know. Letters yeah. that are beside each other in the alphabet? Nah, you go, I don't know. Just do random letters. <laughs> <laughs> what about X and Y? No. no, no. no. Yeah, X no. and Y. <laughs> That's actually the solution. Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Whoever has thought of X and Y doesn't have a job anymore. <laughs> just for just for mentioning that, just the idea of X and Y, you go, you're out. Okay. I thought we were doing two we're, letters we're, that are beside each we're other. We're trying to go as far away from X and Y as possible. So. <laughs> no. No. Yeah. We have to tell the fellas about Grinds once again. Now, Grinds was one of the biggest companions with me and Danny when we were dealing with those time changes abroad. The Grinds. Who's always a who's got a grind. I'm on that grind. I have been on that grind, and that's the thing. People are listeners of this podcast are about that grind. They're on that grind life. Mm -hmm. And the Grinds, if you don't know what it is, here's some. I'm going to tell you about Grinds a little bit. Grinds, it's small pouches. Coffee and caffeine helps you quit, cut down on some bad habits like vaping or zin, which actually is very true. Yep. Because a lot of times you just have the, sometimes people have both of them, you know what I mean? And then you just go with the coffee. But a lot of times too, you don't want to do a full cup of coffee maybe later in the day. So you just pop a grind in. Yeah, pop a little, just a little jolt. Yeah, exactly. Or you just have them and you're just like, oh, I want to get a coffee. It's like, well, I don't, I can't go get a coffee. It's a whole hassle right now. Grind. You have them in your pocket. Quick hit of energy. Use it anytime, anywhere. So I first found out about it. Uh, when we were uh, doing Tim Pools, we were doing Tim Pools. Someone had grinds, and then Fun. yeah, we started talking to them. And now they're sponsoring the Boys Cast, and I'm recommending it to people because I'm on that shit. Use the code Boys Cast for 25 percent off at getgrinds.com and it's also available to Amazon so you've seen us doing them we've been doing them while we're on the podcast and it is a best quick hit getgrinds.com and the promo code is boyscast and that's 25% off your first shipment and taking care of your health isn't always easy but it at least should be simple and that's why I've been doing AG1 every single day drinking it no exceptions it's just a scoop Mixed water once a day, every day. You feel energized, nourished, strong, ready to start the day. And on top of that, I actually do use the bottle they give me where a lot of the things like this don't have a good bottle. Yeah, a little shaker bottle. Yeah, it's it's the right size. Each serving of AG1 delivers a daily dose of vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, and more. It's powerful, healthy habit that's also powerfully simple. And the reason for that is a lot of times you'll have a bunch of different vitamins or you have a multivitamin and you forget taking it. Athletic Greens, you won't forget taking it because it's actually good and it's easy to actually put into your routine as the first thing and you do every morning. it tastes quite nice. Yeah, it's a nice taste, exactly. And you probably should be drinking some water like that in the morning anyway. Mm-hmm. So you're doing something you'd already kind of be doing. And then on top of that, it pretty much tastes good. And then on top of that, they have travel packs you can bring with you if you yep. go on the road. With AG1, I know I'm getting the essential brain, gut, and immune health support with vitamins, prebiotics, and nutrients from Whole Foods. I like to think of it as nutritional insurance. I know I'm covering my nutritional bases right at the start of every day. So if there's one product I had to recommend to elevate your health, 
AG1. That's why I've partnered with them for so long. So if you want to take ownership of your health, start with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase exclusively at drinkag1.com slash boyscast. That is drinkag1.com slash boyscast to check it out. We always talk about the wacky parents and when the wacky things that they're up to, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the the just the the mom specifically. Yep. But there's a this this was in America, but it's a school that expels the children of a woman, who, and she promoted promoted her OnlyFans on her car. Yeah, it's a bit much. Well, literally child abuse. Imagine being that kid. Obviously, dude, I can't think of anything it's two worse. Kids, too. It's two kids, dude. I can't think of. I mean, I can't think of anything worse as me, and I can't think of anything better as a guy at that school. Like and as the bully, you go. Oh, as the bully, you go, check out this shit. He goes, we don't even have to work for this stuff anymore. You're making it the too easy. The kid's mom showed up with her OnlyFans link on the back of her car. And she does it like she's running her windshield washing yeah, well, service. She, the you thing know? Is, is, you need to write off the. Co- she's just being honestly kind of uh what what is it uh like the penny pound foolish or whatever you think that's her writing off the car well that's what you have to do is is a lot of times you go if you want to write off the car as a work expense to go well how do you use it for work and you go well it's like see i I drive to my shoots to get banged but but i think they also that's why a lot of times they'll have have you ever seen the magnetic ones where people like they slap the magnet on the side of the car with their thing and you think that's that's i think i think that's i i believe so you're saying it's advertising it's like advertising and that's where you get like the full full write off or whatever but you're like come on <laughs> you fucking hate like maybe you go yeah if you guys come back with all bees next again like if you guys fail your classes again <laughs> i'll fucking bad. slap and like that's like a dad joke thing you know dad goes yeah yeah you're gonna do that all right well i'm fucking getting the only fan <laughs> sticker decal back on the thing and then we'll see how your grades do huh <laughs> <laughs> The mom takes the megaphone out of the school. Kids, uh, just to the record, uh, tell your parents I do OnlyFans. <laughs> I do uh, requests, personal requests, anything. We get real dirty. Anything you need. Maybe sell a sponsorship on the basketball team jersey, like the OnlyFans mom. <laughs> oh, God. Because that's the thing. Like, you know, isn't that in like, high school? Every business is kind of like sponsoring the school. Definitely. Stuff or whatever. My buddy's dad sponsored the soccer team. There you go. So the OnlyFans mom. <laughs> We could probably lit fucking jersey, actually. <laughs> Stacy slept 45 on everyone's jerseys. <laughs> Not bad. Like the little, just the crest. Right. Little, little baby, little baby Robertson. That's so That's crazy, bad. though, man. It, the dad doing it is funnier, though. The dad coming in like long dick Dave. Yeah. Just... <laughs> rod the rod. <laughs> Only fans slash rod the rod. But the, the also the principal has suspended the kids or whatever because he's basically like this has gone on long enough kind of thing. Uh-huh. But he basically had to go take the kids into the office and they're like, "What did we do wrong?" And he's like, "Listen, your mom's a slut. And <laughs> your mom's a dirty heathen slut. We're, you're getting expelled because your mom's too much of a fucking slut." He goes, yeah, we can't get through to her, so I guess we got to do it to you. Which, I, which, that, by I, the way, that means they asked her. her to take it down, and she said no. Probably asked her a hundred times. Like, so I'm saying, though, you know what I mean? Yeah, and she goes, this is America. Yeah. But they're a religious school, too, right? Like, it's like a Christian school. <laughs> Dropping your kids off at Christian school in the OnlyFans mobile? Yeah, it's not like a public school where nobody gives a shit and your kids will just get bullied and that's that. This is literally a Christian school. <laughs> it's hilarious. Just get the magnet or you could just take it off or get a second. It says she makes 20 grand a month off of this. Get a second car or just send them an Uber or bu- like the bus. Well, well obviously anyone? she wants to. She wants to do this. She's not like <laughs> yeah. it's not like what choice do I have? It's yeah. like yes, I want to do. Yeah, this part of her marketing master plan. She goes, and then they'll be talking about it on podcasts and watch the money roll in. I'd be a man. OnlyFans mom's such a crappy life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that stings. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then opinion, how throwing soup, this is for you, throwing soup at the Mona Lisa can fight climate change. Oh, this is kind of all relates to my sort of thing, too, because this is what I was saying, where they're they're sort of, uh, you know, proposing like, hey, has the world outgrown Jon Stewart? You know what I mean? And it was like, uh, no, the world is sort of sick of this kind of stuff, really. Of course. Considering that I don't believe 
anything's been accomplished yet. Like, do they have, if you go to like the Just Stop Oil, like, do they have a list of accomplishments where they go, this is what all of our hand gluing and soup throwing has done? Well, they always say awareness, right? So they're just like, what do you mean? Awareness of what, though? This, uh, everything. You think that there's like a lack of awareness of climate change? Of climate change. It's like all they talk about anywhere. Well, some consider disruptive antics uh, such as this alienating to the public. Research into social movements shows there is a strategy behind it. And basically, they're just saying like, you know, yes, it's like ruining all these paintings and stuff. But but it this doesn't ruin a- the paintings. It doesn't do it. Well, the Mona Lisa has like a bulletproof glass over it. You just, you just, sometimes they were in the painting. Just like dirties it. And they say that using crazy tactics like this makes less aggressive tactics more acceptable. So they're saying they're moving the Overton window of what's mm. acceptable protesting for climate change. Yeah. But here's the best thing I wanted to pair these articles together. Uh, that came out where they're just like, this is why, you know, throwing soup at everything's amazing, blocking the roads. Yeah. Number two, are the politics of climate change going out of fashion? <laughs> <laughs> they are, yes. <laughs> well, yeah, people are... I mean, everything has like a seven-year cycle, generally, uh, culture. And I think that one of the reasons for that is because that's a full... Um, that's a full someone being in grade seven now they're finished high school. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like a, usually that's like kind of a... Yeah, if you, someone was 12, now they're... Uh, 18. 19. 18. 19. They were 12. 19. Now, they're, now they're off to college. Now they're off to college. Or joining the military if they're trans. Yeah, but it's also funny admitting, like, yeah, uh, it's fashion. We agree with that. Mm-hmm. Um, politics as fat, politics as fashions too. What's in and out? It's not so long ago the world leaders were jostling to be pictured with celebs like Leonardo DiCaprio, Stella McCartney, and Emma Watson at the huge COP26 climate conventions in Glasgow, where Boris Johnson played host. Then it was hip to be green. <laughs> okay. All right, Boris. I think the problem is with a lot of that stuff, you're like, it's not so much that that there's always going to be a faction that's kind of like wacky environmentalist, but yeah. it's not so much that it used to be Greenpeace, remember? And they would p- put nails in trees. Yeah, there's always, that's always going to exist. Blow up pipelines and stuff. Yeah, it's just people don't think it's. Uh, you know, kind of what happens is like they have their little wacky movements then they become these like huge mainstream movements and anything that becomes a huge mainstream movement has a ticking time bomb on yeah. it uh-huh. but um, people are less uh, sick of like the climate part they're more sick of the idea that at any cost yeah where it's like yeah we're gonna solve this problem by ruining the economy and sure. everyone has less money it's like people are like yeah yeah we yeah go, we, we like you trying to go plant trees over there and you're yeah, just like whatever. yeah and your mortgage is gonna go up you're like well now you lost me a yeah, little bit you lost me and your electricity is gonna cost twice as much everyone's like okay I, i'm i'm thinking i'm a little more out and you go gas just doubled you go okay well, <laughs> you guys are done <laughs> also i was late for work today because you guys glued your fucking hand to the road <laughs> Yeah, everyone's kind of like, you're done, bud. Yeah. I mean, just think of anything. If people were like goths and they were just like, you know, everyone's like, okay, goths, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Well, it's like once you're like in, uh, you know, once you're like in the government making rules that like, hey, there can be no lights because we're vampires and we need the lights off at all these places. Everyone's like, fuck right off. Yeah, for sure. They're like, look, we did your recycling shit. Even we we know it was fake. Yeah. Have we done enough? I think we got all conned into recycling. And I got a, a green bin, I got a blue bin, I got a fucking brown bin, yes. I got a metal bin, I got a clear bin. Compost. Okay? I don't even know what compost is, okay? No one does. I did it. Just, isn't that enough? It's not, it wasn't though, that's the problem, right? Because people are trying to make a name for themselves in these movements. Yeah. So that was the the gist of uh, that segment. Um, but... So you can see why it's like, as a you know commentator, if you're like, yeah, I gotta ignore all that stuff, and we just talk about you know Trump's crazy, but like all this stuff is super reasonable. It's like, well, anyone with a brain looks at that and be like, okay, well that doesn't, that's not the voice of reason. No, plus people like Trump's crazy. That that discourse, it's like a it's like a warm blanket. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like of. there's like a coziness <laughs> to just everybody just being like Trump's crazy and we're all fucked and. Something that's a uh, soothing. It's like a pacifier almost, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why we're getting more of that. So backing out from the political part of it, uh, these girls have a really good article. Did your ex give you a demon sti? An exorcist explains 
how to forget them for good. And the gist of it is that you can get uh, the guys give you a demon STIs. It's an untestable STI. Uh, can- like not in the, <laughs> uh, unless you're in the spirit realm. <laughs> yeah. You can't currently, there's no test for that one. So it's a new term alert, demon yeah. STI. Okay. And when you bang someone and they transfer the demon entity to you. I've given some ladies my demon entity. You got to wear protection. I have a <laughs> demon STI. You go, oh God, what am I getting on? I'm also here? allergic to latex though, so. With the demon STI, uh, is that, would that be AIDS? You go. <laughs> <laughs> we don't call it that anymore. Energy specialist. Oh, that's someone who got a degree in colonization. <laughs> energy specialist. Uh, decolonization. Specialist in energy. She reveals that entities can function like sexually transmitted infections, and you can indeed get a demon from getting it on. Well, this is what the specialist says. Okay. How much do you think people go to this, uh, pay to go to the energy specialist? Since this article came out? Do you think the energy specialist has a rich husband and makes a... Uh, no, I think this is... Sh- no. Who do you think? What do you think energy specialist's I, life, I, day-to-day I, is I, like? I think she lives in Bushwick... <laughs> Probably in uh, like a big artsy kind of like loft type studio where mm-hmm. she like showers in the sink. Like remember that one place with the sink showers? Sink showers, like for a sure. sink shower, but it's like a nice place. But sink <laughs> shower, a lot of just things smoking all the time. She got a cauldron. This person says, "I'm eighty percent sure I picked up a demon STI from a bartender in Boulder, Colorado." Thanks for the hangover, Russ, and the entity. <laughs> so she gave him an entity. Now uh, here's the question: If you are a man and you have like how did you where does it originate the demon sti like did i get it from a woman is it innate in me like is it even my fault that i have it glad you asked danny i've uh, con- uh, <laughs> i've uh, i've actually contacted the specialist and sure. they say that uh, guys invent them by being demons so. ah gotcha okay the only way a girl can get a uh, demon STI is from a demon man. Right, but and can a demon right? But can a woman transfer it to a man? No, it stays with the girl. It stays with the girl. It's for just life. such a, uh, until a, she pays. It's a very patriarchal. Until she pays the six ninety five. And also, once to, the guy gets rid of it, it's gone for him. Oh right, so it's so. Is there like a? Is there a? Um, could you te- theoretically trace this back to a host? You know, this was the f- original demon. I think that I'm incorrect in this. Probably she's saying that like these guys just have demon STIs and they're walking around giving them to everyone, and right. now we're all demons. Right, right, right. Because that'd be bad for business if she goes. There's just one, and once I kind of get rid of it, then I'm yeah I'm my thing. You definitely don't want to be able to trace it back to patient zero of the demon, <laughs> the original <laughs> demon. But also, then if she gets rid of it, then he goes, it's just gone. She has it in a jar in her Bushwick loft. Dude, if you had to have demon. a girl, <laughs> she sits you down and she goes, "Listen, we have to talk about something." Like. I went to the the specialist, and you go, oh, no, what happened to the specialist? Are you pregnant? Do you have an STD? And she goes, he gave me an ed demon STI. You go, all right, okay. <laughs> no, even worse than that is some chick fucking texts you. She goes, hey, we got we to gotta <laughs> oh, talk. God, you gave me an STI. You, and you go, what happened? You go, I got a fucking STI. What the <laughs> fuck, dude? And you're like, what? You're like, what are you talking? No, I haven't. I, it's impossible. She goes, yeah, you get, what, what's the STI? Which she one? goes, it's a demon. And you're like, what? <laughs> Demon STI. You give me a demon STI. Yeah, okay. Well, the reason I even wanted to talk about this is because how you get rid of it is the best part. Yes. So here's what you do. If there's people at home listening, they have a demon STI. First of all, what you want to do is you paint yourself with the colors of courage. So you're going to want to get some paint. So, that's so it's sort of a handyman. Flag? Colors? <laughs> that's the colors of courage. I don't know what the colors of courage are. It's trans flag. <laughs> The color has a lot to do with energy. Add more red to your wardrobe for courage. So red's the color of courage. So you basically paint yourself in red paint. Okay. Which is good, though, because if you do go to do those protests where you're, uh, like, vegan protests where you're pouring red paint on people, you just do a little for yourself to get rid of your demon STI. Okay. So you sort of kill two birds with one stone. You get paint on someone else, and you get rid of your demon STI. Question. Can I use my period blood? Oh, that's a good question. I think so, Danny. Yeah. So you're going to want to use the period blood. That's probably actually the best way to put courage paint. Yeah, 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 because what's more courageous than having a period? Passion and new beginnings. Add purple... For connection to your higher self, so if you that's you don't have to get connection to your yeah. higher self, but if you want to throw in a little connection to your higher self, you're gonna to want to add purple. Does, is lavender okay? And you bring, uh, I think they're pretty specific here with their purple. purple. Okay, and uh, you put that on yourself and bring in the vibrations of reality. So that's the first one. Mm. We want reality to play a part <laughs> in this. Huh? Well, that's where you lost me. 
You want to keep your quartzes close. Carry a quartz rose for attracting love and amplifying love. And a carnelian for igniting passion <laughs> within. She goes, where do I get the coach? Funny enough, I sell them for 69 <laughs> It's all included in the platinum package. <laughs> the demon SDI removal. <laughs> How much is this? Do we find out? I didn't. I didn't uh, write down the price uh, of the platinum package. I don't know how much the platinum package is. So you're so basically you go to this specialist. You're probably paying fifty bucks an hour for the energy specialist. Then yeah. on top of that, she's dumping paint on you. You got to <laughs> sell on your rocks. <laughs> And then you repeat a mantra of enoughness. Add an energetic mantra to your day. In the morning, in the mirror, say, I am worthy, I am powerful, I am everything I need. So you're kind of, this is the main, the the, the final chapter of getting rid of the demon STIs, screaming in the mirror affirmations. at yourself. <laughs> yeah, affirmations. Okay. Stuart Smiley. Stuart Smiley. I am worthy. I am energetic. I am everything I need. Everyone, your roommate's like, what the, can you keep it the fuck down? You're like, I have an STI. <laughs> I got a demon in me. I'll tell you what you don't want, though, is if you're a Brooklyn dude that believes in all this shit, you're look, you're just uh, you're about to smash a girl, and before she comes into the bedroom, you hear her in the mirror, I am worthy. I go, what are you doing in there? <laughs> you get, you're trying, you yeah, a, yeah, do you know, do you have a demon SDI you're not telling me about? Well, you just have your your crystal, then you just have your man crystal that blocks the demon STI. You have to have like, your quartz like crystal a, on like you your at all own times. quartz crystal, guys. Obviously. Maybe just as a necklace, just hanging around your neck. <laughs> Just kind of like, what is it, like a silver bullet for va vampires? I'll tell you what. Girls are pretty good at monetizing things that happen to them because this other girl says, we're young with herpes and we won't be ashamed. She's basically like a herpes <laughs> influencer. Dude, girl got herpes and turned it into a whole career. Girls are pretty good at influence or like monetizing these dumb things. Yep. Yeah, they are. She told her boyfriend shortly after diagnosis, I was worried and afraid that he would break up with me. And she goes, it was around that time that she told her friends and family about her status with her view to go public. <laughs> The friends and family should have been like, why? Yeah, you don't have you to. Know, lots of people have herpes. There's no need to make it your whole personality. And then she goes, no, you don't understand. I've already got herpes girl 49. <laughs> like, I think there's going to be money to be made in this fucking getting herpes business. You know what they say? When God closes a window, he opens a sore. So... <laughs> I would hate that, man. If you have any girl was just like, and uh, by the way, I got herpes, and I should probably tell you the next thing is that this is going to be my entire fucking <laughs> public deal. I'm going to be posting nonstop, so get used to this. I mean, there's a lot of people who have herpes whose whole identity is never talking about it ever once. So Even at my lowest point, I had an inkling I might speak publicly about this. I wanted to help other people, so she, even when she was like, no, yeah. no, <laughs> I am unemployed right now. <laughs> Yeah, love to see that merch. No, what huh? happened is someone's like, she goes, oh, I can't believe this happened to me. Her friends like, let me buy you dinner, and she goes, huh? Okay, I wonder what her merch is like. What if, is that a job? <laughs> yeah. Getting things bought for you because you have herpes. <laughs> she got like three hundred k followers on all the platforms. She's an influencer, and she goes, I embrace this as an opportunity to learn and teach others. So, like many millennials of the time, I started writing about it. I had a blog and I made a Facebook post, and I felt very empowered. So. She's made a whole career out of this, and it really kind of goes back to the dude side hustles or, you know, drop shipping, and drop crypto, shipping. and girl side <laughs> yeah. hustles or hip herpes influencer. Yeah, herpes awareness. <laughs> but there's, so there's another, okay, now there's a guy version of a wacky dude. So did you, did you check out lovepanky.com? Love, pa yeah. So basically, it's this uh, Indian dude, I think he is. And he has a, he gives a whole tutorial on how to be a trophy husband. Yeah. What it means in 17 ways yeah, to be a rich girl's bow. Kind of, <laughs> this whole thing was kind of fucking weird. It's I'm super like, weird. I don't think this could be effective ever. That's kind All of this could do is turn some potential psychopath, sociopath into like a worse version of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> like you're only gonna make them worse because someone whose goal is to be a trophy, trophy husband, husband as a man. Well, also there is other parts of it that don't make sense. Like you need to start, like you need to find a way. Like, the biggest thing is you need to be around all these rich women, right? Yeah. Which is, I guess, you know who's actually probably pretty good at being trophy husbands? Guys who work at resorts. Those guys actually probably haven't figured out how to like how to but woo I don't, these rich, okay, rich but single women. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but I think. If you the part of being a trophy husband is not dating a seventy year old widower, 
I think that's probably he might not want to admit it, but <laughs> like if you're just being like, oh wait, I had to read 17 steps to find out I had to go bag an old lady whose husband died. I think you do have to bang an old lady or husband. Oh, died. that's no good. No, but this guy's he's sort of doing. He's trying to say that guys can do it, the thing that girls can do, right? Yeah. Well, d- tell guys me if, can do anything. Girls can so do. You don't, don't forget it. You don't think you can become a trophy husband? You read this and you go, "There's no hope for me." <laughs> <laughs> First, you have to invest in your looks. Danny's out. Yep, uh, out. Make it a lifetime goal to achieve the six pack. So first, first and foremost, you're gonna want to, you know, get the six pack. Obviously, okay. yep. study something for passion, not career advancement. If you want to be a trophy husband and you don't have any desire to chase well-paying and successful career, why waste your time studying economics or management when you can do your true passion, which lies in French literature? Okay. Do you remember that thing where I think uh, someone sent us the or reminded us about it recently? But there was a a post where it was like in the the communist forum, and they're all talking about what they're going to do after the communist revolution. They're all talking about like, you know, I'm well, I'm going to teach lesbian slam poetry, and <laughs> all and they were like all listing off their things. It was just like there's not going to be a single person at your entire fucking communist society that has one real job. Nope. Nope. You're like, who's going to work at the restaurant? And you're like, well, I obviously not me because yeah. I'm teaching, you know, my, yeah, yeah theoretical bullshit i'm teaching yoga to homeless people all right but there will be no homeless people though so that's kind of buy the right clothes on her be with the in crowd and i think this is where it falls apart a little bit i'm telling you this is where you're turning like these people are going to be demented like if you have to read this because you don't know you, you have- don't have an inkling you go oh the it crowd you say well this is a great point and it's like all these things it's like uh, you're telling a guy you're t- talking to a guy that would be reading this probably isn't like that good. you're right it would have to be a guy that was like already amazing with women yeah exa- like, exactly exactly and then it's a choice that he's making he's like okay well also I'm amazing with women but like also I don't want to just like sit around and read French literature all day no c- c- yeah that's what I'm saying like if you're just like some regular dude and then you go buy a nice I, I mean I want you're assuming so you have some money you go buy these nice clothes and then what you just go hang around these like high society events in new york city well they're teaching you have to be, essentially you have to be a con artist you have to be a con artist because the moment you get with these women the moment that they find out you're not of their same cloth generally and they go so what do you do and you go i don't do anything yeah and you go what so I'm why a are you husband yeah. yeah you go why are you here you go you go, I'm a socialite. You go, oh, so who's your family? You go, no family. I think you have to have your story. You go, oh, well, right now I'm between things. So hey, you're a scam artist. It you're a con that, artist. Uh, the Will Smith movie. The it is also funny, separation. though, just like the thing that all girls like kind of naturally do. When a guy, or like a guy doing it, we're like, obviously it's a con artist. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, literally how many girls like go hang around where the basketball players are. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? That is essentially, yeah. like It's a harder sell for a dude, though way harder sell for a dude but yeah this is well being with the hit crowd it's like you're like how do you get to the hit crowd it's like well what you want to do is like if you want to be around all these like really famous people what you want to do is like make yourself really important and then so you want to have like a high job and <laughs> yeah. then you're like well then I'm not a trophy husband anymore yeah, right. <laughs> I was like I did all this work why don't I just get a hot girl and you're like no 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 and now you running do all, a startup working 90 hours a week what you did all that work for was to get in the parties right and then you're at the parties and then you try to you, you know you get invited to uh, Elon Musk's party and then you walk around the room trying to fuck all the girls <laughs> and then one, and then quit your job I think it's more possible that you uh, what's more possible is you're making 40 grand and your wife's making 60 grand and then you you be like I'll be the guy raising the kids and I'll quit my job I think you could probably pull that one off a little more it's probably yeah. you have to be probably there's a very few yeah, guys that are pretty highfalutin to be certain referring to yourself as a trophy husband well, most fucking... women that have like you know millions of dollars obviously everyone already knows this but most women that have millions of dollars are looking for a dude with more millions of dollars yeah, yeah, they want 10 million not <laughs> one correct create the illusion since being a trophy is a husband is primarily all about appearances you have to show that you're more than just meets the eye create the illusion enroll in dance classes if you're done with that enroll in yoga then enroll in learning how to cook persian cuisine then volunteer at a soup kitchen almost like having a job it's pretty specific stuff here well yeah so basically you want they're saying they're sort of saying like a latino pool boy like they're coming home yeah. and you're fucking taking salsa classes like 
Yeah, you want that? What was it like? Like Britney Spears' ex husband was like just like a her trainer or something. That's now you better idea. be like if some okay if you were like in but a he situation was a trainer to the stars where your girl had millions of dollars. You better be like fixing the shed, not taking you know to salsa lessons. Well, I mean, I guess you reach a certain amount of money where you go. Well, you certainly don't want me to do a shitty job fixing the shed. We'd like That's to hire true. a There's... professional so that I can bone up on my salsa. Lessons. Well, this is assuming that your trophy wife is like really rich. Yeah, which is. You know, I mean, this is the tutorial. I'm sure no people have made this work. I would like to see if there's anyone that read this and was actually successful in their quest. No, I, I would, would doubt it. Guarantee it. You know what? If you're a dude, what you want to do? This is what you you do if you're a dude. That's actually if you're trying to pull off being like a a dude that uh, is with a girl that doesn't and you don't have to work. Mm -hmm. The actual move is you date a girl who's rich because her dad's rich. So it's like... And she's gross. Well, yeah, well, think about this, though. You go to college with a girl whose dad's rich, you know? Yeah. She don't have any money. So she, like, got a house bought for her that's free. Like, she has all this stuff, but she's not really rich. Right. So then, you know what I but mean? But I don't know if that affords you the trophy husband kind of staying at home thing because no, you're both staying at home or you're both oh now the dad's just paying for everything. yes a girl that's rich but she didn't earn it and then sh you and her just but then you you're just like doing stuff with her all day yeah, yeah and then you eventually have to murder the dad when he doesn't want to like up the payments well the dad keeps paying out because he yeah but eventually one time he kind of doesn't take a liking to your whole trophy husband stuff because he read your dad blog. would hate the trophy yeah <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he doesn't like you. He goes, yeah, I, I, you seem to kind of have planned this whole thing, huh? And you just kind of planned that I was just going to do it. And then you're like, yeah, and if you don't keep it going, you have to kill the dad well, for well, the insurance money. This guy hasn't got high on his own supply because he wouldn't be writing the blog, like which this, is actually this an even better This honestly boy. most of the times ends in someone getting murdered. <laughs> if you take this guy's advice, someone's getting killed at some point. If <laughs> For sure. But also, if this guy was a trophy husband right now, he mm. wouldn't be grinding on this new blog. That's true. That's true. But it's all, yeah. It's all, <laughs> I mean, it's always, there's so many of these like guys that are pickup artists illusion. that are bad with women. Yeah, but it's like create the illusion. You're like, you're talking about scamming. Like, this is con <laughs> artists. Con artists create an illusion. But that is the girl versions of this. Like, uh, dude, I'm not kidding. I was like dating some girl, not maybe like dating, dating, but like, you know, hanging out with. Yeah. And it was like a, you know, Toronto, like, would have sex with basketball players type of girl. Sure. And uh, she had a book on her bookshelf called uh, Hot Girls Die Rich. <laughs> Or something like it was something along the lines of that, and it was like a guide for like how to hot girls to end up rich without like doing much. Yeah, and that's like a a book that actually is like uh, probably sold a lot of copies. I bet. I, I mean, it's that is a viable if you are a hot woman, you are like as much as you want to be like, oh, what are they bringing to the table? They bring a lot to the table. They yeah, they are bringing a lot to the yeah, table. Yeah, they go just because yeah. Oh, they don't have a job. Who gives a shit? They're hot. They have maybe good genetics. But this is kind of like there was an article recently about the the fat thing, right? And I was actually we were going to talk about it maybe later anyway. But one of the big things was it was it was an advice column, and the advice column was like a a girl saying like, "Hey, I put on weight. My husband's like bugging me about it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what do you think?" And legitimately, they had multiple people give advice, and all of them were like, "Leave him immediately," right? Yeah. And it was just like, well. Maybe, but like, what's the deal that like, there's plenty of girls that are like, well, they, they, the deal is they stay hot yep. and the guy's like, I'll do everything for you. I'm going to make sure your life's amazing. Like of all course. you like, and maybe it's even sometimes more equal, but the guy being like, listen, I'm going to be the best boyfriend, but like, you do have to be hot. Like that's, yeah. a, and part of it is, and this why the, this doesn't work when you flip it around is like dudes are sort of like to some degree judged on the women they're with but but women don't get as much points the same way you know what i mean no and then on top of that women are sort of judged on like the career of who they're with of course they they're they're in it for i mean it's just like the classic the women want status and men want looks yes so th that's why it's like everybody's bringing to the table i don't think th i think that this will help you this, a lot of this is like how to seduce a woman like yeah it probably helps if you're like oh i'm a salsa good at salsa and you're just like yeah but like if you've been dating someone for nine months and you're like what'd you do today and he's like cha 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 <laughs> i mean this like, is okay. this thing seems like it was literally written by britney renner like number nine have a couple <laughs> of kids <laughs> like what well, you do have to have a couple of kids i mean that's like yeah if you're trying to fucking snag an nba dude have a couple of kids that'll do 
it. A good reason to stay home. Get to your go-getter CEO wife as early as you can. Go-getter oh. CEO wife doesn't want fucking go-getter salsa, CEO, man. Yeah. <laughs> go-getter CEO, uh, CEO wife, high-performing, does not want some dude taking dance lessons all day. <laughs> Reading French lit. <laughs> Fuck no. Considering himself a diplomat. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, the only way is if she has, like, she. let's say a girl, like, inherited a lot of money. Yeah. But then you're kind of just helping her spend it. Sure, I guess you know if, you're basically part if of her you start, but that's the thing. Spend someone else's and if you money. and if you maybe started at the same point and there's never any money on the table, then it's that's a little different. But we're talking about getting someone who already has the money and you don't have money, and it's just conning. Well, yeah, th- th- this guy's talking about how to run a scam, and it's probably not going to work that great. Here's the probably the best one. Have a couple kids is funny because it's like <laughs> pretty big life choices. Yeah. And you just go, but if you are locking them down, you need to have the kids. But he says, don't you dare sign that prenup. But it's like, well, what do you do if the girl's like, want to sign a prenup? And you're just like six months in. How do you, or six years in to your scam? And the girl's like, I'm not, yeah, we're going to be obviously doing a prenup. And then the guy's like, no, yeah. I will never. Yeah. He goes, what do you, well, you have to like, well, re- you, he literally, you, cry? you can't even use girl tactics. Yeah. You have to just become a chick. You have to like, ch- Channel. Uh, you, know, you think we're gonna get divorced? Then is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's why you want to sign a prenup, huh? Because we're just, you're just gonna fucking use me and tra- throw me out like trash, huh? You have to have this girl so afraid that you're gonna leave. But it's like, it, it's you just sit around all day and read books. Like, why? Why would she be so afraid that you're gonna leave? You have to, unless you just completely have her brain wrapped up. Yeah, which is a very s- certain type, rich woman, low self esteem for some reason. Probably not hot. I guess you can maybe pull this scam off with. Yeah, you're definitely not pulling this off with someone who's super hot and rich and high performing. And you're like, the trophy husband is just a couple of rings away, and you're set to tie the knot soon. It's just funny talking to dudes like this too, right? It's Don't you ridiculous. dare sign that prenup. It's, it's literally like the guy found this exact article for women Changed and then men and women. just literally control F, find and replace men with women. Girls do talk like this though, man. Don't be. Do not do not think that this ain't happening the other way around. I know that for sure, dude. There, there's a link at the end of number eleven. Don't sign that prenup where it goes. Dating an older woman. Forty five pros, cons, myths, and secrets to impress her and date her. What kind of stuff does that say? There's forty five of them. Well, give me a couple. You've well, worked so hard to get where you are now, and you've invested so they're much. They're all the same shit. Dress to impress. <laughs> number two. This is where. This is how big of a fall off this is. Number one. Dress to impress. Number two. Stick your chin out. What does that mean? You're uh, saying that you're more likely to get a rich. You're girl a young guy, and that's a major part of the attraction for older women. They like who you are. All the youth, that freshness and youthful spirit. So just pre- uh, well, the hard part. No one to keep. This is just applying this. No one to keep quiet. No, the better scam is be a guy with three million dollars that dates like a girl with fifty million dollars. I think you can pull that one off a yes, little more. Absolutely. That's what I, sort of what I'm saying. It's like you're the guy with fifty, you're fifty grand a year job, and you're like you know Mr. Salsa and all that sort of stuff. And then you date the girl that makes two hundred. I think those are like I, realistic scams a guy can pull off if you want. Yeah, I, that's I suppose that's that's not a again huge, though. I think it again, really that's not a huge scam if you actually want to be with that person. I know I know guys that like their girl like inherited a house and they're living in it yeah they got a free house out of the deal for sure but i'm just saying like in this sense you're you're essentially saying you're dating a woman who's you wouldn't want to be with otherwise that's what it feels like right of course and then you go is this such a you don't want to be with this chick but she makes like 180k and you make 60 and you're like the rest of your life for this well yeah i guess you don't want to go that's not like the heist of the century it's not like she's like a fucking vanderbilt but i think if you're a if you're the 60k and you're good with girls i think a lot of those guys can pull off like 150k a year that you do want to be with for sure you know what i mean and you're bringing some other stuff to the table maybe she's shy and you're you know yeah yep you're cooking all this but then again it's, is it really worth it if you have to take all these salsa lessons? <laughs> Number eight. <laughs> location, location, location. I don't even know what that means. Oh, that, that means like they're basically saying you want to be in where you got to find out where that you got to be in Florida Keys. <laughs> Number five, complimenter. Number six, avoid flattery. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true, is it? Yeah, that's, that's five and six. Number, f- Number five was complimenter. Number six was avoid flattery. What are the difference? What does it say? I don't know. Read them. Okay, complimentary. The older woman is a lot smarter and more keen. This is like a fucking... 
almanac and more keen minded than your own age group but she isn't so bitter and cynical that she doesn't know how to appreciate the odd compliments okay so, so you give her the odd the compliment. odd compliment <laughs> but once you start laying it on too thick she goes you're just this dowager knows that you're just in it for her money so you want to be sparing with the compliments yes well again all this i guess the part of it that's just like basic seduction is like okay yeah some of that stuff works and like some of the pickup artist stuff works but it's like um being the like uh getting the 50 year old millionaire chick to sign to uh, not sign the prenups probably where a lot of it falls apart absolutely yeah especially when they kind of i think this is more of a party boy lifestyle where you're like hey i can if you're like mr party boy you have some like essentially a sugar mama this is the dude who we covered a few get- weeks ago who lived in the van and then remember he met the yes. chick and then he got the house and but then he didn't but he's back in the van he's back in the van <laughs> but she paid for the van i think a lot of the guys she paid end- off the van though a lot of the guys end up with a little bit a dowry here and there but i think if you think you're gonna be walking away with this with like the big payout that's probably a little more rare yeah and it's probably not gonna come from the guys reading these blogs no, <laughs> no way not from love panky <laughs> love panky's hilarious and then also just because i mentioned the 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 fat study but it said um uh, this is what the advice to the girl was. They go on the thin side. I think bye bye. That's what the their advice was to yeah. the girl uh, who said that her husband's been mentioning that it, she she basically said she put she was like pretty she skinny was underweight. And she she goes, then, I was underweight. Now I'm regular weight, and he wants me to well, go back. She to underweight. says regular weight, but we don't know. The husband yeah. obviously liked the weight before. Yeah, he goes, uh, yeah, he just liked the look. I don't see what there is to interpret. He tells you daily exactly who he is. Uh, he is as subtle as a wet t-shirt, but the effect of his bias on you was masked and you'll buy your never having gained crazy weight. Um, but there is some deal where you're like, okay, if you date someone and you like the way they look and then they like the way you look and then you change like completely the way you look. It's not, I mean, it's fine to say like, if that's your personality, you're like, I don't want to deal with that because I want to mm. be in a more comfortable relationship. But I just feel like it gets crazy when they're just like, this is insane. It was like, yeah. yeah, it's not insane that the guy didn't I mean, like again, it. It depends what we're talking about. Yeah, pounds. like it obviously depends if he, she's like, yeah, I literally gained eight pounds, and he's like, fucking all over me. You go, okay, yeah, that's probably allowable. You can gain eight. Sure, pounds. but you, yeah, you'd have to see it. But yeah, yeah, but it's not like it's just not insane. Yeah, like, like you're just like yeah. I mean, if you yeah, if you want to be like if you want to be on that lifestyle, what's the deal? Like I don't know. Are you guys like a health couple and stuff like that? Mm-hmm. But it's like to say like. This guy, his wife put on a bunch of weight and he doesn't like it. You're like, <laughs> like fucking something. This, what the fuck? Is he fucked in the head? Yeah. I mean, like, the most crazy, most normal thing to think. Yeah. I guess it depends if it's pregnancy weight, but she's not. Pregnant. Well, they started saying the thing. They're like, well, a girl is not a trophy. And it's like, well, I mean, even then the guy if version. If she's not a trophy, like, then why do I have three other fucking heads above my fireplace, huh? <laughs> it's not a trophy, but it's a reflection. Yeah, of you, you know. That's why in the guy version, I mean, if you put on like sixty pounds, mm-hmm. sixty more, bringing you up to three fifty, <laughs> and then your girl was like, "You're getting a bit fake." Can you, can you believe her? I can't believe this one. Can you believe her? <laughs> like, who would? What guy would ever be like? Can you believe this woman? Yeah, some guys would, and then normal people would be like, "Yeah, she has a very good point." Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't yeah, think yeah, that? I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, this is the other thing is I think a big part of this is really what is the problem for dudes when a girl puts on like 15 20 right yeah your issue is not so much always like okay this is a problem i think a lot of guys are going to be like it's the same with a stock right you're just like which way are we trending yeah <laughs> see what i'm saying if, sure. the, if it's like oh it goes kind of up and down yeah i think every guy, and then okay imagine you were with a girl and she go, kind of puts on a bit of weight loses a bit of weight but puts on and you kind of are just like okay yeah puts on a couple in the winter yeah, and then the summer gets yeah, back into shape she's bulking and cutting yeah whatever yeah yeah That's but if normal. you're like if you're just like okay the entire time we've been together you put on five pounds a year you just like you look at the trend line and i think it just get, makes the trend line broke <laughs> Can handle the I, weight. I think that's the part. That's yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, it's the same with the stock, right? If you have it and it goes, if it's going up a little bit every year, you're just like, okay, I'm feeling good about that. If it's going down a, a little bit every year, you're just like, okay, I don't know if I really want to own this one in 11 <laughs> years. What are we going to look? What's my Blackberry sure. Rim stock going to look like in 2028? It's going to look like Johnny Sack's wife. <laughs> So that's why I think that they miss that entire part that you're looking at the trend line where you're you're not even like yeah. okay you know what I can maybe deal with this but it's like this doesn't even sound like that so much I th- like I don't know she uh, again it's, uh, you can't you're only getting one side of it but she's just like yeah I'm currently at a normal weight and he's mad about that 
Well, I guess that depends. But there's also on trade-offs to that say. too. Like I've been chicks That who depends were, on like who's I, who's deciding that, whose decision. Right, right, right. But I've been with chicks who are like, you know, they're they've been at a quote unquote unhealthy weight and a normal weight, and I thought they probably looked better at the unhealthy weight, but then they're probably like mentally were like disasters at the unhealthy weight. Well, so let me just like tell you a little trade off. Sure, there. but I will also tell you there is not an epidemic of underweight women right <laughs> no, now. No. Dude, have you seen some of the fucking anorexia? There's a bit of a shit. Yeah, that stuff's weird. On like Twitter and TikTok and and like a lot it almost seems like a troll well if this guy's like a fucking literal like deathly ill skinny fetishist then yeah. that's a different question right but like in uh, the there's a, i saw i think it was on twitter there was like this girl and she's like looks like she's maybe like you know Auschwitz getting liberated like that day kind of thing like I she hate, looks so I hate fucked up those no but it's feet. like it's really and people will say look how is this any different than a, than the 600 pound model on the cover of Vogue, they're both equally just on other ends of the spectrum ill, right? Like they're, they're both sick. They're just, they occupy the different ends of the spectrum. But then like the comments are like these girls and it almost seems like they're trolls, but they're like not. And the comments are like, oh my God, and, like you just look so good. Like I'm just, I'm trying so hard to get down to this. Fuck one. off. Yeah. It, it's like women are really, I guess there's a lot of chicks who are like into that. But this isn't like Kate Moss modeling. This is like, you know, her cheeks are like sunken in. I've seen them, man. It's, it's not good. There really was one at Guelph, you remember? I do, yeah. I there do. was one chick do, like that at I Guelph. Do remember I wonder that. what's going on with her. She used She's to walk dead. Her. She might easily be dead. Yeah. yeah. That was not good. No. So it's like, yes, you don't want to be into that. No, you don't. I mean, if you were trending that way too, you'd probably not like it. If I saw if I was dating a girl that was normal and then she was lost five lost five pounds, lost five pounds, lost five pounds, you'd probably be the same way. I'd be like, Is this what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is <laughs> getting a little weird. Yeah, do you still have a period? Your or? ass is a bone right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but anyways. It's fucking it's crazy. I guess yeah. if it levels out. But then also in Finland, they started doing the weighing on the plane thing and it's caused a big uproar. It's weird. I don't think they're a really fat society, though. I'm no, that's why it's funny. And it's funny because Finland is also like pretty progressive. Yeah, they're super progressive. Exactly. And so they're going to have to be weighing fatties now. Yeah, but do they even have that many fatties? Well, to your thing, remember before you were saying scale shoes would be a good way to get a girl's weight. Yeah. <laughs> now you bring them on your plane. You go, where, where you take them on a trip to the plane. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm I'm the military in the 90s don't ask don't tell but yeah it's just interesting happening in uh, Finland but it's this Finnish airline and they're basically doing it but people are not happy but they about go, it. it's just for the weight of the planes I actually would like that man yeah. save you a trip to the scale every time you go on the plane you just fucking get a quick one yeah that's what the carnival <laughs> guys for. taking the shoes and the rings off before <laughs> yeah. you get I could see Danny being like, "Well, obviously the, yeah, you yeah. know, this my my ticket that I'm holding. That's it right there. <laughs> Yo, can you please put up the curtain so I can get <laughs> totally naked like a fucking weigh in? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, t- DP's wearing sock shoes to the way- <laughs> sock shoes at the airport. Oh yeah, yeah, I gotta travel light. <laughs> okay, um, so uh. Patreon.com slash the boys cast. Uh, we're going to announce the when it comes out in like a day or two, the Bugman versus Bugman. It's like 90% edited. Woo. We just don't want to. I want to wait. I want to wait till it's like finished, finished, which will probably be in the next day or two yep. uh, to when we announce it. But obviously, we'll blast out to everyone. But yes, sir. And bonus episode every week at Patreon.com slash the boys cast to all the fucking top G supporters. The top G's. Peace. Later.